Hey, everybody, Sims back. God, that was a quick transition. Maybe I uh, set it odd for when it was uh, back when it was doing other things. I think that must have been it. Anyway, uh, hey, everybody, <laughs> how's it going? Looks like my um, did they push an update to to, it, to YouTube chat? Because that uh, funky little pop-up thing didn't used to happen. And, uh, for some reason, that's not working properly. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can fix that. Don't know if I can. Anyway, what we're gonna do tonight is, um, a bit of a recap. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's working at all. It's not moving past Alan's thingamajig. Let's, let's see if we can flip to the end. Is that still doing the same thing? Looks like it is. Hang on. Anything I can do about that? Um, maybe not. Maybe this will do it. No, nope, that just broke it again. Okay, so I might need to fix that at some point, but that seems to be uh, mucked. Look, one, one second. I had this was working before. Nope, same, same thing, same thing. Okay, so chat's fecked. Uh, goodbye, chat. <laughs> Good start to the show, anyway. Hello, everyone. Um, gonna go ahead and <laughs> give you guys a lowdown on everything that's happened in California. Um, all the little fun little stories from out there. Share a bunch of photos and videos like I normally do after those trips. Except for I didn't get a chance to recently, because uh, as many of you know, I was going through physiotherapy and stuff after the California trip, which actually only made the whole thing worse. I thought like heat, hours in a hot tub, surely chilling out, you know, in wine country would make me feel better. It didn't. I think it was something about the heat or whatever, but the nerve, nerve problem in my neck is like, Totally didn't get better, but I still had a good time. Didn't stop me having a good time at all. Uh, I'm gonna kill the music, actually. I think. Two seconds, thanks. Uh, that's, the, that's another thing that I got. 
Thank you. Cheers. Um, that's another thing I got, which was, uh, which I, I picked up a, a headphone amp uh, for the first time. This guy, the the Fio Olympus Two, which uh, some of you have seen me go on about. I did a live on un unboxing, live unboxing. Done. Uh, I did a live unboxing on on Twitch and just tried it out. It was my first ever headphone amp, uh, which I, I've been impressed with so far, and I'm pretty convinced that it like opens the soundstage and has made my music in general better quality, but um, it's gonna take me a while before I really notice the difference. And I think the real proof is when you try it and then you go back to something totally different. So anyway, let's get on with some cop stories and stuff like that. We had a really fun uh, cop story, but I'm just gonna give the lowdown of, of kind of everything that happened uh, since the very beginning of August, just to give you some context on other things. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and kind of jump into this thing. Um, one thing I don't have, um, I only just recently recognized, is uh, I don't have my green screen set up, so I'm not going to be able to appear on, and I hoped we would have chat, but yeah, looks like chat's effect as well. Anyway, typical start to uh, coming back to things. Actually, I, I <clears throat> reapproached headsets only yesterday, um, Saturday, and got my Oculus Quest uh, on again, downloaded all the patches. There were about 12 different patches. Um, I'd been doing drive work as well, so I suppose unbeknownst to all you people, um, I had, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that in a second, uh, I had all my drives filled up, like all of them. Like I had my VR drive, I had my main drive, I had my files drive, OS drive, everything was feckin' full to the brim. And I had two drives, two four terabyte drives sitting there ready to go. And then they wouldn't initialize on Windows and I was like, feck, what do I do now? I'm up against a brick wall. And then I had all the medical problems and it was like, oh no. This is a difficult situation. So I was like, okay, just take a step back, like focus on fixing yourself first, right? And then get the drives in order. I already made those drives and I've got new drives coming tomorrow. So actually on the drive side and data, I've actually managed to kind of move things around. I've got too much uh, in terms of data platters, I'm sure, but I'd like to make sure everything's got a backup. Um, and so that's all good. And, uh, and yesterday I managed after like four and a half hours to get all of my quest and go stuff working again So the whole stream stack and all that is working again I was a little bit nervous after some patches that oculus had made because Initially they weren't working for me and I was like, oh shit. This isn't good um, And so I thought I had to recode a few things and got it all working again. So anyway, uh, so we're good for oculus Rift S, Oculus, well, not quite Rift S. I, there's still something I need to fix with Rift S because you guys know the bordery thing that I usually run. I, I think I'm gonna scrap that for Rift S shows and uh, the Oculus uh, Go and uh, Oculus Quest, I will be able to stream with that. So I'm, I'm planning a show for Tuesday, starting off on a bunch of things that I haven't touched at all yet. Uh, there's so many new games um, and I'm just gonna fling into them kind of sporadically to be honest to start with and then uh, Rift S is kind of my next priority is try to get that up. I do have after all of my drive work I do have uh, Asgard's Wrath installed but what you won't see is probably me playing that even in the next week or two weeks I'm kind of just going to wait I know like everyone's been like slamming Asgard's Wrath and I'm sure people are like I just don't want to see this shit right now everyone's slamming it um, so that's where I stand anyway like I literally don't want to see anyone else's Asgard's Wrath stuff and if you have it and you have a rig that you want to play it on and all that I want you to be able to play through the game so that I'm not spoiling anything when I play it so uh, anyway that's it yep <clears throat> crash that's the one I want <laughs> um, oh yeah yeah I forgot you wanted the tool album you're gonna hate what I have to say um, hey ninth how's it going people say there is no VR content but now there is so much coming there's way too much actually back so I, I mean you have any kind of interruption in your life, and I find you just, you're behind an, an absolute mountain. I have about 40 indie titles, uh, thanks to indie devs who have been throwing them at me. That is kind of my specialty, is to kind of go through what I call the indie grinder, which is just like cutting right through a whole bunch of different indie titles in a night. We're going we're gonna to focus on and do a lot of those sessions, because I, I love them. They're really fun. But anyway, tonight, like, let's get started, because if I don't get started on this, we will feckin' never finish. I had to already carve in half an hour, because I had to make sure that... Um, all the naughty stuff was out of these photos. Because uh, there is, I went over for some NDA work, uh, some non-disclosure agreement locked stuff that thankfully will be announced within, I think the next week. Uh, so finally I can kind of like, and like tell you all about it, which is great. Or tell you little pieces about it, 
I'll have to ask them how much I can say and what I can't say, which is good because it's, it's a project that I'm really proud to have been part of uh, and excited to be part of it. And I'm just glad it's coming out because it's the kind of thing I'm definitely going to be playing. Um, OK, let's flick back <coughs> and I'll do a bit of a run through. We'll come back here so you can see my face every once in a while. Maybe I should set up the green screen real quick. Um, you guys be patient, right? Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll do a couple of bits and then I'll do that if because I think seeing ah, feck it, feck it, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. It's, it doesn't take that long. Um, let me know. Try try message by the way. See if that works. The thing is, I, I mucked all this up kind of for um, it. It was a quick thing, but I did this. <coughs> I did this whole thing setting up. Um, let's see here. You guys get to see how I whack up my green screens. Um, oh, geez, that's uh, actually on that side already. All right, well, let's see. Let's go back over here. Watch. We're going to see it over here. Boom. Half my room has disappeared. Now I can do the other half. <laughs> no, that's fun. Um, it's a pretty easy setup, to be honest, but I think it shows the, um, the benefit of this green screen system because it's really handy. <coughs> I would have been a little bit more prepared, but I ran out of time, to be honest. So, um, hey, you know, give you a rough and ready. All right, you do that. Don't, don't fall over, please. Thank you. Okay. See, I'm just a regular person like you. Right. right. Now, is that working or is that fucked up? That looks like it's generally working. Cool. All right. Good. All right, now we can go through and, uh, <clears throat> Again, this this scene is actually normally for uh, for the other way, but he says, uh, "Nope, I think TTS is broke." Okay, cool. Um, let me see if I can do anything with that at the moment. Um, I'm really curious about the uh, the chat thing. So obviously, some update. This is the problem if you've been away a month from your setup. Uh, sometimes you know chat and stuff like that gets really fucked up, and uh, that just happens. Let me see if there's anything else I can do here. I don't think I need it anyway, because I'm here looking at, you know, I'm sitting in front of the PC. I'll sort this for Tuesday, which will be our first show back if everything goes well. Um, now the question is, do we want to do any music in the background while I'm doing this? I'll say no, because I'm going to be hopping through videos and stuff. These are generally like run through stuff. So this is going to contextualize uh, what happened in the last month. And um, we're just going to talk about kind of that in um, some level of detail. I feel like drunk, a drunken bar fight needs feet trackers. What, so you can kick people? as possible, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, what I should do, can I do this? Here, move things around a little bit so I'm looking more at chat. By the way, this water, Voss, oh, you're not seeing that, there you go, Voss, this is awesome. If you have never um, tried water uh, bottled out of glass instead of bottled out of uh, some other thing. Glass water is amazing. It's so much cleaner tasting. Like, it's great. Like, plastic is like that. And there's actually, well, I was traveling somewhere and they said they didn't even do glass. I didn't even do plastic anymore. I don't know if that was California or is that somewhere else? But this stuff is great. Um, it's kind of expensive, but um, the thing that we have that I would totally recommend any household to get is one of those uh, filter, like you filter tap water, but it, instead of sitting in plastic, it sits in glass. It's easier to clean um, and it tastes great. So anyway, boom. I've only tried the water from the loo. <laughs> Thanks, Pax. Rich people water. That's it. Before about a hard drive, eight, five, four. If you're not VRing, you should be fine without Messenger. Now we're going to do a couple of things. So first off, what started off the, um, <coughs> what started off the month for me was very much uh, getting the Tool album. I've been waiting. Oh my God, 13 years for this thing. And uh, that was a huge thing for me. So that was really simple. This is just some of the artwork off of the album, simple stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna belabor this, but I did a, a whole kind of YouTube thing and that was really fun. Then I got into some artwork and the artwork books, if you are a Tool fan, I'd say Net of Being is really cool. Sacred Mirror is probably less so, but still very nice artwork. Uh, but Net of Being is amazing. So um, for the money that they're asking for it, which I think is 35 pounds UK, um, a, an incredible tome of, of Alex Gray's artwork. And if you're going to buy one thing to support Alex Gray, the artist who did that picture and a number of others for the tool, 
uh, thing, then, then that's awesome. We will get in quickly to this. What is this? This is a picture of my cat, I think, that Karen sent me. That's Walter. Happy cat number two. Oh, yeah. You don't usually get to see Walter, actually. He's, uh, and I will be getting into Cali stuff very soon. I just thought I'd do a little bit of early, early September. And that's Walter. That's our cat, Walter. Oh. He's a good purry cat. Boy cat. Uh, so we have one girl and one boy. And uh, he's the orange one who always just sits in our dresser and, uh, or sits up where you can't see him. And that's it. He just hides all the time. That's him. Okay, this is, what is this? This is part, this is part of that uh, album. One second. It's gotta be too loud. This is like part of the tool thing when you open it, the, the kind of discreet thing. Cat video internet points. <laughs> have you seen Virgin's water filter? Virgin's water filter, no. Do they have one? Does it restrict you? Anyway, this is probably enough of uh, tool stuff for you guys. Uh, let's see. That was from the tool stream that we did. It's me doing something. That's more tool stuff. More tool stuff. Okay, this cat, uh, Misefer gave me at one of the barbecues and I've been burning it slowly. It has a, um, you can almost see it there, a metal skeleton on the inside. So you burn the cat and then you're left with its like evil looking effigy. Uh, that's as far as we've gotten. Okay, here's when I got a fake tattoo. This is, this is terrible. Uh, I was like, <laughs> this is not a tattoo. This is like, it's an AR app. I thought it was kind of cute. It's an AR app that allows you to tattoo yourself with a variety of different images. Uh, it's called Ink Hunter. And um, I was like, all right, all right. Twelve ninety nine for four bottles, what the fuck? Yeah, I'd say filter your own water and have it in glass, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> yeah, that's it, I think. Um, let's see here. What am I doing? How do I go to the next photo? Ah, lo-fi. So we covered this uh, shortly before I had um, the more severe issues. Uh, that's coming out soon, and I think the Kickstarter is still open, if I'm not mistaken. So you can still put money into it if you want. There's my daughter. I don't know why I've got that picture in here, but that's her doing things. And that's my kids on the couch with a little tracker on the top left-hand corner of Jade's head because we got the CV1 downstairs. That's near us. Uh, these pictures are not... That's also not... That's... That was because of the death of Mr. Crab. For those of you who followed our lovely little crab man, he died. And uh, yeah, that was that. Uh, this is the thing that I had done. 10 videos for YouTube, and then it got stripped down. We're almost to the Cali stuff now. Um, and here's a, just a little zip of it. So it was basically, without the mic in the way, it was Audio Surf playing all the tool songs, and I was commentating over the top of them. And it worked really well. Um, but that's just... That's just that, you know? That's what it is. Is what it is. Uh, Cube World was a huge disappointment as well in September. September just didn't go down well, did it? Uh, except for the end of the September. I, I did like that. Uh, played some No Man's Sky. I actually played some No Man's Sky from uh, far, far away. Um, I don't know how you, how you would uh, talk about that. But this was, this was amazing. This was not my photo. I took this off Reddit. Uh, someone had made this amazing picture. But uh, if you haven't gotten into No Man's Sky or considered it, Definitely think about it. It's like amazing. Um, the T7 water bar. What is that? What is the T7 water bar? Uh, Delian Legends Kickstarter needs some love. I agree, uh, DL. Um, I saw it earlier and I was like, the thing is, I think it's a two person team. They're focused on the game and they need a media person to like push them or a promoter. Mm. For those who don't know, it really is um, a, an excellent like C Sim. Uh, uh, concept at the moment. Um, it's not a fully fledged game yet. Uh, two person team out of Colorado who's working on it. I don't know if it's husband and wife. Um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, look at it. Look at it. It's the Leon Legends. Good call out there, um, uh, G27. Let's see. Uh, what else we got? That. Okay. Oh, this. You have to see this. If, if you're into Switch games at all, we've been playing this. It's so weird. Which is. Awesome. It's called Sundered. It's incredibly animated. We played it a bunch on Twitch. So for those of you who have watched me over on the Twitch channel where I do my 2D stuff, uh, you'd have seen it before. This has nothing to do with me. Um, I have no idea why there's a naked Barbie, Barbie picture in my reel. Okay. Um, oh, this is great. This is by Perry Bibles Fellowship. 
I don't know if any of you know this comic strip, um, but if you go to pbfcomics.com, they are all my kind of humor, and they are just amazing. So um, I must have been looking this up or, or something else. Zim is stripping down Barbies. Actually, that Barbie's been sitting naked around our house for like probably six months. She had clothes on for about five seconds before my daughter's like, get in there, you know? She just uh, couldn't have enough. So, um, how do I Let's zoom into this? <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. All right, here we go. Uh, that's when I learned there was a, an Anima album, which is lenticular. You see the lines in this? Um, see how there's like these uh, lines? It's because it's a holographic image. And uh, you, you, put, you turn it back and forth, or you move this sheet, and it, it, and it moves, and it's, it was awesome. It was, it was the original Tool album I got into. Anyway, I told you that I would get away from this. All right, uh, developers, you need to check this out. This is a free um, iOS app. I've been using it for about two years. When Karen and I designed our first like text game for Twitch uh, called Intermission, we used this. And this is basically a series of ways of looking at your game design uh, by Shell Games. And they're behind, like, um, Until You Fall, um, I Expect You to Die, a whole bunch of, they've got a huge pedigree, uh, to be honest. And I really like Jesse, Jesse Shell's kind of way of thinking. And he published this, and this is free. It's an iOS app. So if you're ever into game design, you want to kind of consider how do I look at a game uh, from different angles, then this one definitely opens your third eye in that respect. And I think that that's really cool. Um, you've seen, I have too many plat too, too many uh, game platforms, which is why I haven't gotten a Switch. The Switch is so good. It's really good. This was the picture I took of my, me and my son just before going. That's me obsessing over what I'm going to wear which day. <clears throat> this is a, a, t a trip, a, a trip trick, a trip trick that I have to share with you. What is this album? You keep just jumping to such random stuff. Uh, I filtered a bunch of stuff out, but I wanted to give people the context of what my life was like in the lead up before this trip, so that then you can see how badass the trip was. And um, <clears throat> it, was, it was pretty cool. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm going to bring duct tape. Why? Because I always bring uh, blue tack and other type of adhesive stuff. It's handy on trips. <coughs> duct tape is really useful as well if you bust a suitcase or, you know, you just need to shut somebody up for a little while. Duct tape is fantastic. But uh, one of the one of the team from Sirius Sam, I think, uh, showed me this trick where you take an old credit card and you take some duct tape and you wrap it around the card. Look at the packing density. It, it's amazing. And I put loads on there and it was this like tiny little thing. I will do that every single trip now. I mean, thankfully, I'll, that'll probably last me like 10 years. Um, <clears throat> this other thing as well, if you're a streamer and you tend to go to events or if you're ever flown out to one of these events by uh, by either a studio or company who's like backing you, like, invites you out to a party um, or one of these conventions, here is, I'm just sharing some of my kind of internal uh, stuff here, my stream booth list. This is what I bring to make sure that I've got stuff for uh, for the event that, that, that like is I have to have every time. Blue tack's great for to make sure when you put a, a, a camera down, it doesn't move. Um, your lav mic to make sure that in a noisy environment, uh, you're not you know relying on a webcam mic or a desk mic. I've done kind of mini uh, cardioid uh, mics before, but they really didn't work. So you get a lav mic. You get these little stickies called Rycode stickies um, that stick to your lapel. And you get like great, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate it later. You get great audio pickup, even in a noisy environment. And, and the thing that you care about is then you can record uh, uh, a game, some footage, you playing or whatever. Uh, they can be playing feckin' Taylor Swift from the ceiling and it doesn't pick up. Um, or it doesn't pick up enough to like trigger YouTube and stuff. So this is really important. Having a pre-ready stream config for OBS and talking with the um, people about that. Having the OBS installer in case they don't have it because you don't have to try to download it. Uh, the Oculus debug tool for pre-configured uh, scenes. Earplugs for when you're like at a concert or something so that you're not blowing your ears out and the next day you can talk normally. That's actually one that I learned at PAX because in fact my ears were dead. Um, a USB key for when you take large capacity files off of other people or you know, you're trying to break the US government by sneaking it out of uh, Guantanamo or whatever. And then, and then, and then a webcam, preferably 4K, 60 frames a second, whatever. Uh, this channel is random stuff, full stop. It's pretty true. Um, that's pretty true. Now this is me saying goodbye to my uh, my little studio uh, in Scotland. 
This is, Karen will be interested in this, this is the horrible holidays, what I call horrible holidays, because this is what I had when I was away from home. She makes amazing holidays, and this was so disappointing. I was like, oh, I had this at Weatherspoons. Weatherspoons here is like, it's like a pub that serves breakfast food, um, which is generally pretty good after a night out or whatever. Uh, you know, a bit of soakage, but uh, that's some haggis, uh, sad salad, and some eggs benedict. Um, yeah, with the old bacon stuff. Um, okay, here is me walking through Edinburgh Airport on my way to take the first flight, which is Edinburgh down to um, down to London. And then here's us heading out over Edinburgh. You can see the lovely uh, patchwork stuff, which we normally have anyway. Can't zoom in on that. What a pity. Who takes vertical video these days, huh? Back in seriously now. All right. I don't know how that loud how loud that is for you, but I feel like it's kind of actually a lot louder than it is for me, which is weird. Um, probably because it's a pass through. Okay. Uh, it's, okay, I got to Heathrow. This is my quick uh, trip dialogue. I got to Heathrow. The cool stuff is coming later. <clears throat> um, I got to Heathrow and yeah, I was all ready for my flight. I was not ready for six hours of delay, but I did have <laughs> I did have some dumplings, uh, which was nice. Those were nice. I was like, yay, dumplings, and then I learned the bad news. Uh, eventually I got on a plane, so there's my uh, boss water. I wanted to leave that in. Pro Instagram streamers, possibly. Uh, again, why? this is sad. I took this picture because I like the wavy grass. I was like, yay, wavy grass. Okay, let's go past this now. Uh, giant ass fecking plane, right? If you haven't been on one of these, the wings are like a Death Star. It's amazing. It's like a, I forget what it is. It's a some Boeing. It's fucking huge. It's massive. I've uh, flown this way. I was flying to San Francisco and the London to San Francisco flight is this giant aircraft. I mean giant. But basically they had us sat there waiting for six hours, get some food and all this. And I was like, oh, I'm so wrecked because I'm always wrecked the night before because I'm packing or whatever. And um, they had to fix some part of the plane. Uh, they brought out giant trolleys full of like uh, granola bars and, and <coughs> stuff like that and everyone just raided it and then they, they gave out these printed sheets which were good for a tenner each or something um, <coughs> in like restaurants in Heathrow and so we had food and all that and they bumped the flight up and we ran to the gate and got on the plane and everything was good again anyway so got on the plane got off the plane that's me getting off the plane finally after a an 11 hour flight um, and I'm like, oh god, you finally got me here. Thank god. That's the size of the plane. It's giant. It's not 747. It's not a 747. Um, and I don't believe it was a 737 either. Uh, I think it was something else. I think it was a Boeing, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Got to San Francisco airport and here's me grimacing going like, I need to take at least a photo to let everyone know that I'm not dead. Uh, you can totally see Mr. Bags under the eyes has had enough. Um, yeah, so I was like, I definitely was wrecked at that point. Wasn't feeling too good and took an Uber or whatever where I needed to go. This is a silly little thing. I don't think it was a 777. I've been on a 777 before. Um, these are pictures, these these pictures are a little out of sequence. I don't know why. Um, it's something to do with the time, the, the, the time stamping. Um, this is a, well, why did I take this? I have no idea. Okay. Good, good for me. Now, when I got to San Francisco, I crashed, uh, slept at the, I slept at the hotel, got up in the morning, uh, tweeted people out and was like, okay, where do I go for breakfast in San Francisco? I have a little bit of time to kill. I had like a 10 a.m. meeting with this, um, uh, with this publisher and I got a recommendation for this place for which I cannot remember the name. I'm a Muppet. Why didn't I take a picture of the outside? It was incredible. This is called The Hangover. This is the best breakfast I've ever had in my life. First, let me tell you, what do we have? On the right side, <laughs> you're like, just get onto the VR stuff, Zim. I will, I promise. Butter soaked, you can see it. You can see butter soaked, right? Sourdough bread. Butter soaked sourdough bread, just like perfectly crisp. Oh, um, sunny side up egg with peppers and like some jalapeno stuff in there, spring onion, uh, it's like salsa, basically. 
Um, and then this like fried um, fucking potato mess. Oh my god. And cheese. And it was like, oh shit. This was amazing. Yeah, VR stuff, no, not on this channel, exactly. <coughs> oh my god. Um, maybe it wasn't a Boeing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a. Uh, what's. Give me another B thing. Uh, making me hungry. I'm sorry, I'm going back to stream days of old. Don't worry, Ninth will tell you. This is exactly how the show used to go for like ages. Like this, this is all we did here. This is like the only thing we ever did. <laughs> um, this is how far I got. I was so sad. This is the most defeated I think I've ever been in my life. Is getting to this part of the food and being like, I cannot, if I eat anymore, I'm going to be sick. And I have a business meeting to go to. I can't do it. Please God, help me. Uh, I couldn't finish it. Which is so sad. But if I remember, it was some diner downtown. It was awesome. Uh, here's a publisher guy who tried to kill me over the course of a couple of days. Uh, I won't tell you his name, but um, he was a cool dude. And yeah, we hung out. And blah, 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 blah. More on that later. Here you go. Uh, I figured, I, I, I pinged this over to Buck because I thought it was funny. Uh, but it's Brad's Bucks County USA Crunchy Kale. Which was probably the most disgusting bag of stuff that I've had. I've had and enjoyed kale before. This was not good. Did not like this. Did not like this. It might have been an Airbus. Yeah, it might have been an Airbus 3 something. 3 something. I might, I might even have it on a safety card or something. I usually take the safety card uh, for no reason, you know. Um, so there's that. Thanks, Aaron. Um, <coughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, here's me. So uh, for those of you who did tune in, I did like a vlog series of uh, eight, eight, I think. Uh, I was just like, while I'm in California, I'm not going to be able to stream for people. So how do I keep them in touch? Why don't I just do a vlog series? It turned out to be a lot more of a chronology of 50% um, of what was going on with me, like physically, and those strains and stresses, and me just being real and, and talking to people. Um, so a little bit emo, a little bit of an emo zim uh, reel. Uh, you can watch those on YouTube, by the way. They are there if you're interested. And um, uh, and the other half was like VR stuff and what we were doing with the trips and stuff. So this will be a little bit of a recap. If you watched all that stuff, then I'm going to go over some of it, but I'm going to fly it by so you won't get all the detail here. Here's the incredibly expensive meal I got taken out to at uh, Kusakabe, which is apparently San Francisco's finest sushi restaurant which was incredible and I was sitting right in front of the lead chef who's owned this place for however long I didn't know that I was going to be <clears throat> uh, paid for here and I felt not so great I'll tell you why in a second now the photos hop around over to here a little bit um, but you'll see this is this was a video from the publisher I walked in think about it it's like uh, 10 a.m. on a Thursday morning I walk into this like shared workspace and now this kind of gives it away doesn't it that kind of gives it away fucking why would you preview the middle of the fucking video if you got damn feckers Microsoft you just destroyed it anyway of course sushi disgusts you yeah um, well here we go here we go here we go let's see what did I say here I said something yes look at this <laughs> now I called it right before I saw this thing I I I I looked at this box and I looked at the lady behind the reception desk or whatever and I was like oh yeah it's probably like a snake jumps out of you or whatever and because um, it says you know free candy on the front of it and um, and she's like go on try it you can have some uh, and I was like all right and I, I I I pulled the thing back flicking it back like with such confidence that actually there was candy in there something about the way it's written I don't know and then the spider jumped to me, and, and in the middle of this business office, I just j leapt back and I, I shouted out, Oh, fuck! <laughs> like, and the lady just smiled. I was like, oh, 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 this is the States. Swearing is bad. Uh, oops. But anyway, that was fun, and I knew you all, for those of you who didn't see it, would get a kick out of it. Now, I have no recollection of what I ate, okay? Karen's going to like this bit because, well, she's going to hate this bit, I think. But um, this was like, I don't know what this was. This was something. This was, are you Spider-Man now? Yeah, I've got radioactive powers surging through my veins. That's exactly it. Uh, so this is one. What the hell was that? I don't remember. I think this one was... Uh, not Beluga Whale. What was it? It was something from Alaska. Hal fresh halibut flown from Alaska that day. Uh, killed an hour before or something. 
It, like, this was all, like, proper Japanese sushi, not like sushi you get in Western society, even when it, it's, like, somewhat authentic. This was stuff, like, like just, just killed. Some of it, like, nearly live. And it's why I'm, I could not finish the 18-course meal. Um, this That looks very wrong. It doesn't look great, does it? Now, let's go to the next one. Um, boom. Okay. So this one was tuna, I think. I think this was... Seared tuna. Again, like the mastery of the pieces, they were, you know, giving it on slate. It was something like, I don't remember exactly. I think it was like 260 ahead for this uh, meal. So again, this is another this is another one of those silly perks that is, is somewhat lost on me. But like I loved the food up to that point. I really did. Like the 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 cuisine was like amazing. And then and then we got to baby anchovies. And baby anchovies, my stomach was like, <laughs> it was, they literally had me from a spoon slurp baby anchovies down my throat. And then I was like, nah, you know what? If I eat anymore, I'm gonna throw up or pass out. Like one of these two things is gonna happen. I'm gonna fucking go. I was like, oh my God, not for me, vile. Yeah, a snail jizzing. Yeah, back's not too, not too far off of it, I'd say. Um, anyway, that, is another piece. But there's only a couple of these. I don't have like 18 courses here snapped. This is what turned my stomach. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Would you eat that? What was that white stuff? What the feck is that white stuff? I don't even know. Is that? It looks like, you know what it looks like. It looks, it looks like this is like, <laughs> I mean, I felt so bad for the guy and the head chef is standing there. He's like, but that's a whole course. And, and the guy next to me, he's like, can we get like a doggy bag? He's like, we don't do takeaway. It's fucking sushi, dude. This is all like live stuff. Don't insult me. I was like, oh God, I've insulted the Japanese. I'm with a like super Japanese dude. And my stomach is just like, I'm about to throw up now. It's like, oh God. I mean, I was really thankful. The first half was fine. It was like really good. And I was really adventurous. And I was like, I'm going for it. I'm putting it down. I'll be totally fine. And you know when like, you know when like you're like a kid and you're out walking at the night and, and you're like, okay, it's dark out, but it's not too dark, and it's fine, and I'll be fine, I'll be home, I'll just go. And then all of a sudden, something in your head goes like, the boogeyman is behind that bush. And it's just dark enough that you can't tell, and then you freak yourself the fuck out, and you just go, start running, and you're just like, ah, it's gonna kill me! That's what my stomach did when this landed. It was just the mental part of it, of like, you just swallowed baby fish, like a spoonful, and it did, it was very creamy, and so the whole, fact that it looked like male produce, it really didn't do well for me. So I, I hope, Karen, you would do better than me, but I don't know. I couldn't fare with this. This was tough. It looks like maggots. Exactly. It just was not having difficult. It was on this glass spoon. Now, this was nice. This was like chilled bed of stuff. There's some wasabi there. Like, if you didn't know what the sabi wasabi was, you'd be screwed. There was um, some Japanese... I think it was um, what they call Asian pear. Asian pear is really nice. It's like if you if you matched up uh, an apple uh, and a pear, and they had a baby. An Asian pear is like so crisp and refreshing. It's like it's not juicy, but th there is a water high water content level to it. It's weird. Anyway, I know this is so VR, isn't it? So VR. There's more coming. I'm gonna have to link this. According to British Airways, their biggest planes are Boeing seven 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 three hundred. Ah. Robin, that might be it. I think it was the Airbus 380. Yeah, I think it was the Airbus 380. I'm OCD, had to look it up. No, thank you very much. I think it was the Airbus 380, to be honest. Um, I've been on a Boeing 777. No, I think it was the 380, to be honest, which is like massive, I think. It was, it was, it was huge. It was a 380, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced now. Um, absolutely massive. Maybe you link me to a picture to it and all that. But you still have all ten fingers. <laughs> yes. Okay. And this is well. Look. Look at this assortment of stuff. Now I know someone like Karen would be like, "Oh, look at this. It's like mm, fresh Japanese vegetables or whatever the feck thing that is. You know what that is? That's salmon. That's uh, roe. That's like big salty pockets. I mean, if you ever wanted to know what it was like to swallow. Anyway, I'm not gonna. It, it's salty. Um, and and then this thing. I don't remember what that was. Um, that is some kind of tempura, um, and this is, look, I mean, would you eat this stuff? <laughs> would you eat this stuff? Like, it was so beautifully laid out, and we even had sake for, like, 
ninety dollars or something, like seventy dollars. I don't know. I had it. and I was like, yep, I can tell the difference, but like that's expensive. And I, I, the whole time I was just like shitting myself, like, oh god, I cannot afford this. And uh, I'm glad they picked up the tab. But I felt so bad they picked up the tab, and I only ate half a fucking course. I feel. I mean, it's it's my most embarrassing Japanese story to date. I am sorry, Karen. I have failed our family. Uh, you know. Uh, Ninja sword, right? <laughs> okay, here's the uh, head chef. It doesn't look all that fancy, and that's how you know it's fancy, right? <laughs> the hell is this stream? My stomach is going bad. <laughs> uh, you're getting you're getting zim sick. This, uh, which is a little bit different. The windows in the front should be telling from your photo. Uh, good, good, good point, Robin. Uh, I should probably go back to it at the end of all of this. Anyway, that was that. Um, this is what this is. Oh, this is from the place that I, I did my recordings and stuff, uh, which you can't see much. Uh, it's just like me showing you what I was working with on the day. Um, and that's about it. I'm not gonna, not gonna show any more than that because it might be telling where I was or whatever. So anyway, that's as much as I can show you. This is something uh, a panel I participated in called Dimension X, uh, where I got to try out Unreal Glasses. I talked on a panel about humor in VR. Uh, at the Anno Domini Gallery. Would I go back? No. It was a small, dodgy kind of place for hippies. Uh, I'd have no problem with hippies, as you know. Karen's basically a hippie. Um, and um, it just wasn't my scene. It was like, it was like, it was nice to do, because I'd not talked on a panel before. I appreciated helping them out. Um, and Unreal was, it was all right to try. I'll show you a video in a minute, and I'll describe what it was like. We're finally getting into some of the stuff that you techies are going to be interested in. Hey, what's next? Come on. What's going on? Okay, not sure what's happening. Maybe now. Okay, back to San Francisco. So, I flew into San Francisco. That was my first place. Uh, lots of tall buildings, as you can expect. Now, one of the things that really stands like out is this, the Skyforce building. It's fucking huge. But not only is it huge, there is an entire, like, there's like an entire block dedicated. It's like, I don't know if they didn't pay attention to the whole like September 11th thing, but they have a, a, a city block, several oh, several buildings this size, like this massive skyscraper, and it's like this is South One and South Two and North and North Two, and it's like you've got so many fucking eggs in one basket. What are you doing? If there's ever an earthquake, you're screwed. You know, I don't. Anyway, anyway, anyway. This is so. Can we go back to the sushi? Most embarrassing Japan story. Well, at least you. Weren't in actual Tokyo in in a hole in the wall restaurant with the kiosk you order from, then having to ask for your silverware with everyone staring at you. Oh, Max, yeah. At least I can do that. Uh, Karen and I are into sushi quite a bit. Mm. Right. So, um, oh, I gotta I have to speed this up. Otherwise, everyone, everyone will be in bed by the time I finish. Um, right. What else? More buildings. Yay. Um, so this was on my, this was the day I went, I, so this is like one of the Microsoft buildings, which is pretty cool. I thought that was kind of neat. And it was like, I like Microsoft. They're a good company. They do a lot of good things. Uh, their photo viewer is uh, a lot to be desired. But um, other than that, it's good. And um, this was on my way to, dun, 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 the Twitch office. Um, I got an invite from uh, an old friend of mine in the partner team. Um, I never was a Twitch partner. Um, I don't know if he knows that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he does because he's got access to all the systems and stuff. Um, but he he works for Twitch. He's worked for Twitch since uh, early, early on. He did kind of voluntary stuff for like Justin.tv before they turned into Twitch. And now he works. He moved from London to their uh, San Francisco headquarters and showed me around. And I'll show you some pictures from inside. I was allowed to take pictures. Um, and it was pretty cool. It was actually that a really neat office. I'm gonna show that off. Um, I keep having these issues where I like, doesn't wanna go forward. Now, outside the building, there was this crisis, or um, this uh, climate change uh, thing going on. And the climate change thing was like, just going on and on and on. I left like an hour early and I almost didn't make it on time because people were protesting all around San Francisco. Like it's one of those protesty cities where you just have to be ready for it. Um, this is a friends and family land gaming uh, 9v6 setup that they have, which almost nobody uses, but it's there. So you can do whatever you want. 
and you probably can't see it because I'm standing behind it and I didn't seem to get it in the reflection, but they even had a Vive Pro sitting there uh, with enough space to use it. So I thought this was pretty neat, but the concept was that if you're there and you're like, you got time to kill between meetings or whatever, you can have your friends come along, you check them at the front desk, you come upstairs, you could game for whatever, you know, a couple of hours or whatever if you wanted. And it's like, I just don't get how that works. Um, like, how do you fit that into your busy day if you're doing stuff? I, do, I don't know. Uh, I can see why it sits unused, but it was kind of like they have it all kitted out. It's a pity that they don't, and apparently <laughs> they switched to less comfortable chairs so people wouldn't just sit there burning time without actually getting work done, uh, <laughs> which may explain why we don't get prompt answers back from Twitch. They did have Killer Queen. If you haven't played Killer Queen, it is this massive arcade cabinet, which is a 5v5 amazing game. This is actually out on PC now. Check it out on Steam, Killer Queen. Um, I was tempted to buy it. It's kind of expensive. Um, but uh, if you ever get a chance to play in person uh, with 5v5, it is an awesome experience. But that arcade cabinet must cost a pretty penny. They have one inside. Um, that was a VR respawn. Here's my buddy Pipe. Uh, he's the guy at Twitch who I know. Awesome dude. Really, really cool. Uh, I wish him the best. Uh, it was really nice of him to show me around, take time out of his day. Um, that was my little Twitch badge going in. It was like, hey, Twitch, yay. Like this, yes, I'm 21 or older. And my funny little face there. Look at that. Oh, that beautiful. Right. <clears throat> Geezer, how's it going, GT? Yo, this is me. Uh, <coughs> now, some of you don't know, but um, <coughs> Karen actually took a database job in San Francisco uh, a while back. So I went down to an area in like, what was it, Trocadero? And Cardero, I don't remember the exact name. Went down to the pier and um, just hung out there, and that's where I did like my second little um, second little tour. We're going through all stuff. You missed the. I don't know why I took a picture of my leg. Uh, <laughs> that was weird. Um, and this is it, and that's a bridge. I don't know if that's in San Francisco. I don't really know. I wasn't paying much attention. Um, you missed the food, GT. Thank goodness. Oh yeah, you didn't want to see that, buddy. That was uh, that was kind of scary. Um, Oh yeah, this I took for all of you. I thought you would appreciate that. I was like, hey, it's even spelled right. That is that is Bell. For those of you who don't know Bell, Bell is our text-to-speech bot, uh, which Karen wrote. Okay, so uh, I should say rewrote because originally was de developed by a uh, Czech dude, and then he rage quit on us, and um, I don't know. And uh, so we're like, all right, we'll, we'll just recode the whole thing from scratch. Because uh, his code was uncommented and all this crap. So you coders would appreciate uh, Karen's trials for all that. Did you do Alcatraz? Uh, no, I've seen it from afar. I don't really have an interest in it. And I was mostly <clears throat> working or doing negotiation relationship stuff there. What is that? That's just a photo of me on the, on the pier. Um, this is great. I'm going to zoom in here. All right. Alcohol is necessary for a man so that he can have a good opinion of himself undisturbed by the facts. I thought that was good. That was at a, a posh little uh, drinking establishment in San Francisco. That was, uh, was kind of fun. <clears throat> That's the Salesforce thing. Here's, uh, and I, I'm not gonna, I was just like. It's 9-11 at night. Oh God, I didn't realize. <laughs> I just, uh, a thing. This was the cool thing. This is something GT would have really appreciated because he's a gymmer. Um, this was Black Box, the virtual reality gym. Um, I had such a good time, I convinced Mike to go along. And then he had a, his recording was shite, so we had to scrap it. Uh, but if you want to see what it looks like from the inside, I'll show you a little bit. But this is what it looks like from the outside. Um, I convinced them, I was like, guys, look, this looks like a kind of proper gym on the outside. And I was a little bit, like, I'm not a gym dude. Um, uh, this is a virtual reality gym. Uh, like, uh, <coughs> you think of 9 11 a lot, Sim? I knew now if you'd catch that. Yeah. <coughs> a little suspicious, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, this turned out to be way better than I expected. I thought it was going to be like a sweaty little closet with a feckin' dodgy ass, like, Vive or something. Like an OG Vive. But I'll show you how it turned out. It was like way better than I thought. So first off, you get this app, right? 
you get this app. So you schedule your next battle, is what they do, what they call it. So this app, you know, is your companion. Uh, Maya is the the robot that talks to you while you're in the app. You have a, a player character, and um, there's this thing that people get hooked on because they go to the gym again and again and again, and you get a streak reward, and you get like these unlockable um, chests and stuff, and then they actually unlock additional workouts and different powers and. It's it's a MOBA. It's a it's a battle arena game, um, and I'll show you a little bit how that works. But let me show you some of the equipment and sign-on process. Now this is neat. This is the guy uh, who signed me in. He was totally cool. Uh, this girl was in. The thing I was so surprised about. You might have talked heard me talk about this on the F Reality podcast already. Um, but like, there were at least in my hour and a half or two hours there, at least like fourteen people streamed in and out of like, you know. Fairly nerdy body shapes, but some bigger lads, some skinny dudes. Uh, I didn't see anyone like totally in a wife beater with like busting muscles. Um, this was kind of like nerdy chick comes in, it's like tap, boom, and then she goes to her appointment or whatever. And you can actually just like walk straight in. She was actually signing up for a trial, I think, just like me, uh, along with a friend of hers. And it was just really, really neat. Yeah. So. <clears throat> it was probably full of nerds. I actually thought it was going to be the opposite. I thought it was going to be like a normal gym. Uh, but I'll show you what it was like. This is a full-on dedicated facility. It's got um, a lot going for it. All right, so this was the this is like on the app. This is a horrible blurry image of what the lane-based combat is like in the game. And this is kind of like how you're set up in it. So you're in a Vive Pro and you're doing like, you're, you're doing pulls and stuff. Obviously, imagine a lot less beefier arms there unless you're GT. Everyone else in chat, come on. You know you're not that uh, muscular. So this is what it looks like when you're attacking. This is taken off of a tutorial video. Um, th there's a whole bunch of different videos online you can check out for this. So I'm not going to go through all that. Um, this is what it looks like. I was like, this is sweet. This is like actually pretty cool. So we got this whole like you are the hero brand, and then you've got these like rooms that are really well lit. They uh, they've got sliding like locking doors, and you go in and then you're you're on your own. So if you're into like gym buddies and stuff like that. It's not like that. This really felt like something like 2001 A Space Odyssey going down these corridors. And they had 14 different rooms. So you can see the, the numbers on the walls there. Uh, it was kind of simple uh, that way. Nerds come in all shapes and sizes. Oh, I know ninth. I know. All right, so that's this. Uh, so this is the Vive Tracker strap-on thing <laughs> that you put on. So you see that like red piece. Red piece was left hand and I think blue piece was right hand. And the Vibe Trackers, which are like 90 quid each, they just, like your arms like that, and they like clip in. And they strap around a little bit high, a little bit higher up on your arm than where the, where the wrist would be. And it tracks your arm. So it's basically tracking your arm, and, and it's guessing where your fists are. So it's not like perfect tracking, but it was the best I suppose they implemented at the time. Um, and that's what you put on. And you'll see it in a second, I'll show you. So that's, that's what it looks like. Yeah. So there's the puck attached to the arm, right? And and I was like, do they norm? Do you guys have problems with the Vive trackers like walking? Because those are expensive. And they said no. And I was like, I bet you it's just that people don't know how much they are, because they were just full on Vive trackers, just strapped onto this little thing that helps hook them in. But like you could have just walked that with them. Uh, and and he's like, yeah, but we know who you know which pod you were in. And I was like, yeah, but I could just walk to another pod that's open, and take them. I was just pointing all these kind of obvious things out. Uh, have you seen the episode of South Park playing World of Warcraft? That's a nerdy body. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I just watched that recently, actually, again. Uh, just because I, I do like South Park. So there's me. Yeah, I'm, playing, I'm gonna move this fast. You know, we're just going through the whole slot. If you're un, if you're unfamiliar, if you just joined us, <clears throat> I'm going through all of my California and Oculus Connect. Um, feedback and uh, photos and all that, and it's not all of them. It's a it's a subset, maybe half of the photos. <clears throat> um, this is the setup. It's got this weird like uh, pole erection arm that comes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh, and then there's these triangles <clears throat> that clip in to this mounting on the wall and you see that moves up and down. All right. There's one on each side. <clears throat> and there's the emergency shut up. Not that you could even see it. The thing started like, I don't know, taking you from the rear or something. <laughs> I don't know. And then on the left, you've got this. This is a, a headset cleaner is what this is. 
So this box here, they throw the headset in there and it does the whole sanitization of it, which is like UV and air blown on it. So basically any sweat or whatever, you don't get a sweaty headset back, which is nice. And they do give you a, a sweatband as well. Uh, but you can see there, there's the, uh, the Vive Pro just sitting on the ground. Don't tell Buck, he'd be, uh, he'd be upset. So that's that. Um, but this is it. This is like, thankfully they have this. Uh, I do have a full video of my workout up as well. And then they've got, look, it's a tension, it's a tension pulley system that holds the Vive. So it's all working out. And they got 14 rooms like this in this facility. <laughs> me and my stupid face. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Me and my stupid face three times. And then <laughs> once you finish your, uh, once you finish your workout, you actually unlock stuff. So like in this case, you unlock chests, as I said, with like special abilities and stuff. I might have that videoed later. I don't know. Uh, and then, and then it talks to you about how you did, right? So like it gives you, it gives you range poor shit, <laughs> uh, targets, movement speed, damage per second. So, and this is all based on your physical movement. Yeah. Um, and then you've got different enemies and stuff like that. Hit speed, superb. That's good. Good. And you can like level up. This is pretty cool. There's only two facilities in the world. So there you go. Look, final score. Um, I beat the robot or whatever I was fighting, uh, and I killed his crystals, and then, what does it say? So it says, hero level 1, sets 9, 210 reps. It definitely got you doing more reps than you um, would have expected. Volume was 7,000 pounds, punches and slices 144, champions deployed 15. So you deploy these like little, like, I don't know, figurine dudes that would go and attack the other mobs, but you had to do special... Uh, moves for them. So the, the the free arm movement, like you just do like a pattern and your, your, your vibe trackers are tracking you and then you'd release these guys. Um, that was one part. Then you'd turn around and then you'd like face the, the uh, exercise machine or whatever and you'd be doing pulls and stuff like that and then it would be ratcheting up and give you like this, this um, it gives you reasons because of damage multipliers to like keep going. So it definitely, you know, kept me going. I think a lot of people have uh, what is this? What was it? This is the kind of workout that I got, I guess. But chest, triceps, shoulders, shoulders, three percent. Really? Wow. Um, back fifteen percent. Like, and and it did things where like you had to pull up from the ground, all that kind of stuff. Different workouts, as I said, as you go. This was just a trial. Uh, this was the guy who I met there. He was really really nice. Um, I love this kind of background. It was super cool, and. Um, he gave me his greatest intro. So you could go in there. There was like, you could get a free uh, shake or whatever. You got the couch or whatever. It was, it was quite well looked after uh, as a facility. Black Box is what it's called. And uh, so there you go. That was uh, that was Black Box. How's it going, Commander? Uh, wasn't this with your neck pain? Uh, my neck was in a reasonable state at that point. It wasn't, it wasn't like terrible. Um, but yeah, it didn't help. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I wasn't rotating my neck so much, um, but I did go in not knowing what kind of exercise it was going to be. So you've kind of got me there, um, but I figured I would just go for it. And then if it was bad, stop. <laughs> did you experience the fog rolling in? No, no fog. Um, they, they gave me a sweatband. So my forehead was covered. There wasn't any, uh, even with the temperature because they had a fan blown on you the whole time. It was actually quite loud. I'll um, show you in a second. All right, let's see. Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, there's a video coming, but it's uh, later, I think. This is Twitter's headquarters. <clears throat> right outside. Literally, I'm standing at Box VR looking at Twitter. Uh, so they were right next to each other. It's actually in quite a prominent location, that Box VR place. And it looks nice. I mean, you know, tell me. I'm curious, like, would anyone else take the black box challenge? Didn't cost anything. It was a trial. It's there in San Francisco if you want to try it. Um, but it was it was pretty neat. And what I suggested to them, I said, look, see, see they've got this big panel um, there of, like, multiple TVs or whatever. And I said, look, just subsidize at least one person's workout. Put them in a, in a room and have a screen outside so you can see a nerdy person working out and what it involves, you know? Just like allow someone to get comfortable before they walk in the building. Because if it was me, like, and there wasn't a free trial, I wouldn't have gotten close. I love their sign though, it looks really badass. That was really cool. 
Yeah, no worries, GT. I got the full video of my workout on uh, on YouTube as well, if anyone's interested in taking it. Uh, taking a spin at that. Then that night, I was like, yeah! So I went to this burger place. What was it called again? Melt Burger. I don't know. But it was like, I told you, this is going to be a foodie stream. This was this was my after <laughs> after workout shake. <laughs> I was like, need some protein. I was like, I'm not taking a feckin' protein shake. I'm just gonna I'm gonna eat a pickle. This pickle is a dodgy looking pickle. That's that's this is a dodgy looking pickle, isn't it? I mean, putting that in my mouth in public, I was like, oh, I don't know. Uh, and then there was a malt milkshake or something. Um, and it was what is this? Tomato, raw onion, avocado, sliced jalapeno, and lettuce. It was a nice burger. Uh, was it in and out? No, it wasn't one of the like the famous ones. It was like a new one. I think it's called Melt Burger, and um, <clears throat> or something like that. It was just like a like a burger burger joint without the fries or whatever. Um, very weird, uh, greasy. Yeah, definitely greasy. Tongue shaped pickle. Yep, that's a tongue, all right. Um, and and uh, that's what I was thinking, GT. <clears throat> and um, I don't, getting there. This is the thing I wanted to talk, talk to you about was. This is the burger that could have cost Zim his life. Like, San Francisco, since the last, like, I, I was there in 2000 and, s what, seven, eight? Uh, when Karen was there, maybe, yeah, 2007 or 2008, when she was there with a database job. And, um, and like, oh my God, the homeless crazy person problem is insane. Walking to get this burger, like I walked maybe four city blocks to, f to get to this burger place. On the block that this burger place was on, and this wasn't like dodgy part of San Francisco. It was, it was all right. Like, um, I would say I saw four normal people and fifteen like, you know, drug riddled uh, or or insane homeless people on that part of the street, like out. And it was like, oh my god. I mean, obviously the weather is there; it supports it, but it's like it's such a problem and it's all over San Francisco it's even over San Jose we saw two massive street fights I saw a 6v6 street fight where we thought a gun was going to come out I was well nervous and that's when I was on the town with Rowdy and that it was insane so this burger might have cost me my life I was on my own at that point and uh, I was like oh my god uh, but anyway it was a lovely burger and that's what matters isn't it right lads right now what else is weird about San Francisco coffee yeah Coffee, coffee, coffee. Max, what are you saying there? Saying something important? He said, yeah, homeless are a big problem. There are areas that are an obstacle course with people literally sleeping on the sidewalk. It is, uh, it's way worse than it was in the past. I and mean, way worse. Like, uh, they talk about the states having like a drug problem and stuff like that. Like, it's not that I was, su like they weren't aggressive. No one was approaching me. I think only one or two people uh, spoke to me or something like that. There's loads of people going by or whatever, but um, there are areas I just did not feel comfortable, and I generally don't mind. I mean, I, it, it's it's just it, it was rough. It was rough, and there were people who were like totally out of their head, just shouting at a mirror, and I was just it was really hard to see. We don't have it in Scotland because it's cold and people just die. Um, this is a robotic coffee bar. This made me feel quite unsettled. Yeah. Hey, good night, GT. Um, so this made me quite unsettled because I was like, ah, ha, ha, yeah, isn't it cute that robots are going to take over the world? <laughs> it's like, nah, I don't know about that. Uh, this was another poster for that Dimension X thing. That's actually what it looks like. It was kind of like, but not as sexy as that, but that's, that is what it looks like. It was quite a walk. I had to walk outside in like 30, it was like 36 degree C heat, which is warmer than the human body and which definitely I was like oh my god I'm gonna die um, so that was the unreal stuff these are just videos that I took on the pier and stuff what was that this is the one so this is on YouTube if anyone wants to watch it I talk about stuff and I'm like hey I'm on the pier yay oh and then I was like hey dad guess what I took my I was at this point I was popping meds I don't normally do any meds at all but I was like oh god if this keeps going this is gonna be a very bad oculus connect I got there a week early. This was amazing. So on the Friday night, after having done San Francisco for Twitch and all that stuff, on the Friday night, I got to hang out with Heavy Grinder, who I didn't know before. That robot arm <laughs> reminded me of 
Back to the Future dog food feeder. Yeah. Yeah, actually, a lot like that. Uh, when I went to L LA, I couldn't go anywhere without lots of homeless people asking me for money. Not just downtown, but Glenda, Tungjunga, everywhere. Yeah, Matt. That's, uh, or Matthew, sorry. I know some people don't like their name abbreviated. This was awesome. Look up Heavy Grinder. Like, um, it's a guy and a girl DJ uh, set, and they're quite popular. And I was in the car with them with uh, a friend of the band's, who I was with, and one other. They're called Heavy Grinder. You'll see it in a second. Um, they played a kind of a dive. Uh, it wasn't, I wasn't impressed at the club. Um, but being backstage with a DJ running their set was freaking cool. Um, <coughs> oh, this is going to jump around here. This was the setup process. Oh, hey. Um, what's this then? This is this is that video. I know we're jumping around, but this is just giving you an idea of what that box VR thing. I told you, for some reason, my videos aren't in sequence. So you basically pick up like a puck. You see what I mean? Those are 90 quid each. Like these are not cheap. And it's like, yeah, I'm power man. They could definitely do better uh, with a new version. There's the clean box that keeps it clean or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here we go. Here's the fighters. This is cool. So this is, so you pick one of your heroes or whatever. Dial in your headset. This is like, do you know what VR is? Um, I mean, thankfully they were, it was a very good intro, but it took me like 40 minutes to sign up and then, and then get in. And this is it. This is the kind of interface. As I said, there's good videos online. Go look up box, black box VR if you want us to have a better quality uh, look at this, but it, it's pretty cool. I want to make my way to Black Box. It's 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 free. You can actually go for a free trial, and they did a great job of showing it off to me. So uh, I wouldn't be recommending it if I didn't. Okay, so here is Heavy Grinder. Uh, they had like this giant tambourine with a uh, projector running on it. Kind of cool, along with the laser show and stuff like that. Um, and we're back to Black Box. I told you I was going to jump around. This is that robot. So these are some of the motions that you do. Not that erratic. What the hell? Oh my god. Uh, but that's... And then you're destroying crystals. Destroy the crystals! <laughs> what the... F Sorry, I'm gonna reduce that volume level because I think that's a bit uncomfortable, probably. <sighs> right, those aren't nerds. Exactly, but they, they never show you. It's like they show you who you want to be. So this is it. This is the... This is what it looks like from the inside. You have to protect your crystal. You got mobs coming at you, so it's kind of a basic app. It's on it's on par with a mobile app, to be honest. So, a little bit disappointed in the in the kind of look and feel. That's that's literally the fidelity. It's 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 pretty low fidelity, knowing it's in a Vive Pro, you know. But at the same time, you're focused on on working it out, and so every pull you're doing, your crystal is shooting, right? Every pull you're doing, your crystal shooting the bad guys, and the mobs are coming back, and then you cast these other dudes. You'll see what it's like in a minute. Uh, this is Heavy Grinder again. This is, okay, so here we go. This is, let me see here, this is the setup. That's where, okay. That's not the, all right, this is. It's a much bigger room than it looks there. It's actually a very large uh, room they have you in. Now here's the, you can probably hear it. The fan is going like crazy, so I, Tick into the box. I mean, the Vive Pro of all headsets is like the worst one to connect with. Like, I mean, look, look at how cool I look, right? Oh, it's Carlos. Yeah, that was his name. So here you go. Now wait for the giant erection. All right. So I turn around. What am I saying? at the end of, like, a soccer field. Oh, here we are. The giant erection. There it comes, last. <laughs> this made me a little nervous. This is actually extending. This is the place that I'm going to be placing my chest. This happens a lot. There's a lot of erections in this video. It like, I don't know why it has to come up and down again and again. And, oh, it's because you go into the wall. Yeah. So that's like exercise one. The thing that's really awkward, you'll see it here, is picking up the triangles the first time. This is a rowing exercise. This is where... Okay. I'm 
so glad GT left. He can't he can't critique my my movement here now. Right? Feel that erection, good, yeah. You can kinda hear it, right? So that's the basic movement, right? And then... <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing! Mr. Roboto! Right. And then, see, from the ground, you have ones where you have to pull up. How's your nipples? My nipples were fine. It was actually lower than that, I think. That was the standy one. Does this lawnmower ever start? <laughs> you guys are... you guys are good. So that didn't... Let me see if I can... Hang on, hang on. So you turn around, right? And then they require you to do certain motions. To act... See, like, the thing is just, like, keeps coming back up. <laughs> it's a lot of that. Yep. And then you do a lot of this. That's probably the better one. Oh my god. Why do I show this stuff off, huh? <laughs> look at how cool I look. Oh man, I'd have to, I'd have to subsidize that price pretty high. This, this is for sure the dirtiest workout I've ever seen, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> it's like a bow flex for VR nerds. That's what that is. I'm just gonna leave this go. This is too good. So, okay, and then... <laughs> so you... So like there's there's a pattern that appears and you're gonna <laughs> slice and stuff and I was like I don't even know where the friggin things are and then you hit your wrist I think and then it it turns you around and then you select the battlefield again so it, it gets you to rest while you're doing that and you don't realize and then this thing comes up it is a slow burn see look see what I'm doing isn't that weird like I was casting I am not even exercising that. That was like just slow. All right. Later, I later I, I cared, but it, oh, there's also a water bottle bit. Okay, you've seen enough. This is enough. Zim playing with the giant. You see what I mean? It comes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down, up and down and up and down. All right. So I don't know if you're gonna pick up any of the audio, but yeah, pretty cool. Show the headband. Show the headband. Loud fans. Show oh, the. There we are. There's the headband. Oh, Taking it from the behind. Someone's got to. Someone's got to. Yeah, the whole time. That was pretty nuts. Right, alright. Well, that's me out for now. Uh, that was my first time with uh, Black Box. And that's the whole set of equipment that you can see there. Alright, let's skip that now. <laughs> After this, what did I get for my whole workout? I got a crate. A loot crate. That's single sweet drop. Exactly. Exactly, Michael. <coughs> right. Uh, meteor strike. So I unlock this this thing. And then, of course, my profile wipes. I'm never going to get back again and um, deletes my character, cancels the account or whatever. Um, they do some really nice email marketing, though. I did, I did say after the fact. Oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, this will show you. Here's the app. Oh, meteor strike. Meteor strike. Yeah, baby. I remember it introducing me that. With the comment box? No, it, it, was, it was telling me about Meteor Strike and then... Oh, yeah. Yeah, Windblast. that's the overhead press. So that'll What's be... Wind Blast? Uh, Wind Blast is the lap pulldown. Lateral, oh, okay. lateral pulldown. And Cold, Cold Fusion is the de de deadlift. Yeah. Cold Fusion's a deadlift, so straight up. She was, yeah. she was really quite Those good. are the exercises you would get in your next session. Yeah, so you, so, you, so you unlock the exercises in your next session. The cool thing about the box black box VR thing is, is say you're like getting tired, which I definitely was when I was doing these things. Because, and the thing is, it's like it's got an AI working against you. So if you're, if you're pulling it, whatever it is, you know, let's say, um, I, I, I don't know the US um, measurement. It's like Newton pounds or something silly like that. But <clears throat> let's say, I don't know, it's like whatever. 88 pounds is the pressure or whatever that you gotta exert to, to pull it back. Then it'll all of a sudden hit you with like 100. But you won't know and you'll just be like, oh, I'm just getting tired, right? Um, and it measures how you do with that and it just like throws that in every so often. So it's a bit like Left 4 Dead style in that the AI director is like, is like gonna own you every so often. Also, if you're weakening and you're like shaking on the way in or out, 
uh, it will t tune down uh, the difficulty as well. So it kind of adjusts um, and it makes sure that you're not going to hurt yourself. Um, there is going to be PvP for this though, and I think that people are going to really rip their muscles trying to go after each other. Uh, here you go. Here's the heavy grunder set. We're back to that again. And this is this was the kind of arrangement you can see. So this is from from see see those like drum kits and stuff. That's that's where I'm standing in a minute. And um, this is heavy grinder, the girl and the dude who are about to go on. That's not the dude. It's somebody else. And I was there with like the producer, and then we were behind the set. And it was it was pretty neat. There was a bunch of like crazy. There was a shirtless dude in like satanic gear uh, on the front of the stage. Yeah, <laughs> like wacky to backy, like and weird, but awesome at the same time. Here's the the performance set. It was just cool being behind stage with a well-known DJ. And I looked them up. They're like two million followers or something. I was like, fucking hey. It was pretty cool. Like, it, I, I had fun. I was glad I was able to go along for the ride. And the dude was like, dude, you got a, he was like, you got a perfect circle shirt. He's like, awesome. And I was like, shit, yeah, another fan. And we talked about the new Tool album and stuff, and it was great. Um, okay, is it we're, Oh yeah. Is this anything more? That's just showing their set. It was very dubstep. Now you can't hear very much because I had the thing muffled or whatever. Uh, this was a PC I was using for some recording, which is an Alienware, and I thought it was ridiculous size, so I was like, okay, let's just take a picture of it. This is so random. <coughs> what was your drug of choice? My drug of choice, yeah. <clears throat> uh, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a clean system kind of guy. Oh, uh, this is like one of my favorite parts of the entire California trip, is that I got to meet this guy, who I can't tell you who that is until uh, next week or the week after. There's going to be a public announcement of the game that's coming. So um, look forward to this. You can guess if you want or whatever. Um, which is great, but uh, yeah, I can't I can't unveil this 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 man's face uh, for now. But it was like industry legend, and I got to meet him, and I was like, back, and he knows me from years ago. Um, did some stuff together, so it was like really really a pleasure to meet the guy, work with him, and uh, to hopefully continue working with him. Uh, I'll tell you more. This is the most unflattering uh, aim of Hamza. I'll come back to him later. Sorry, Hamza. Um, we went for tacos. One of the things I, I always do um, when I go to California is, like, it's like, gotta do sushi. Did that. Y'all enjoyed that, didn't you? Mmm. Mmm. Uh, for those who missed the sushi bit, I had baby anchovies in a Slurpee spoon, and then I nearly, I nearly threw up or passed out. One of the two. It wasn't fun. Um, it was good at the beginning. And then that happened. So this is, we went to this little like taqueria, which was awesome. It was like the place like Mexicans go. Everyone else in there was Mexican, except for me and the dude who took me, Amza. And he's Pakistani, I think. So he can get away with it. Like he looks, he looks right for the joint. You know what I'm saying? I don't. <laughs> I just know the white dude. Like, hey. um, they were so nice. Like they only basically spoke Spanish as well. So we had to order in Spanish, which is fine. But then the food was like, ah, oh, this was great. Like lime on the top of this. They, they're gorgeous. Really nice. It was fantastic, man. It was great. Uh, and then we nearly did watch it. Yeah, I know, Rob. Uh, I warn you, uh, my shows are full of food and all this nonsense. So uh, here you go. So Hamza is um, one of the co-founders of Poker VR, which was originally called Casino Poker VR. It was actually Poker VR... Uh, no, Casino VR Poker. They got that wrong. That's so funny. Oculus Go Launch. Poker VR, Casino Poker VR. It was actually Casino VR colon Poker was their name. Uh, they rebranded their, I forget what their name was before, Mega Particle. So they're called Mega Particle. And this is their really cool little uh, Oculus Go emblazoned trophy. I hadn't seen one of these before. Um, usually you see these types of things popping up on Reddit, but I hadn't seen them before. I always loved my Go. I still do. Um, and I will be playing with it uh, probably later this week. So if anyone's got Go titles you want me to try out, then let me know. Um, 
don't know why I did that. Oh, this was my uh, visit to SVVR, um, which was which is Silicon Valley virtual reality. Little office uh, unit, got a whole bunch of things in there. I was in this uh, this room back here, this one which is like a real mixed reality capture facility uh, to show you in a minute. And I was meeting uh, Al Alexander uh, Meja, uh, who's done a whole bunch of things like Starship Commander and stuff like that. So there's me, boom, got to get the selfie to prove you were there, right? Um, and then there's me setting up, and there's him. He's he's a he's a man after my own heart, right? I mean, look at those cables. Yeah, there's like stuff all over. There's a hardware encoder, all this kind of, like this, that, that mixer. Um, and then it's all XLR uh, that he's got. And then we were we did a, um, a stream together on his channel, Human Interact. Uh, they have a, a Twitch channel, so check it out. Uh, he's a cool dude and um, he's uh, another industry veteran. So, you know, again, I love devs. I, I love hanging around with devs, understanding their thought process, the challenges that they've got. In fact, hey, let's get on to the bitchin' exotic car collection. This was awesome. Exotic car collection. This is awesome. This is amazing. Uh, did anything with Phil Helmuth recently? No, not recently, uh, but I texted him and he was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in, um, Las Vegas this weekend. Uh, but he said, anytime I'm out uh, near him, he lives in Palo Alto. Uh, to give him a, a text. He actually said he'd have me on his TV show, uh, play some poker. Um, so that that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. Have it, <laughs> it's crazy, man. I was a fucking streamer and ended up uh, rubbing shoulders with these fucking millionaires and stuff. Speaking of that, <clears throat> this car, uh, I was like, fuck this car. Look at this. Uh, we didn't actually end up taking a Corvette. <clears throat> we took the car next to it, which was a 100D Tesla. Uh, which was also lovely, but I saw this thing and I was like, oh, oh, mm, oh, oh this is so nice. <laughs> I was just like, if I was here on my own, I might just blow you know, a couple hundred and go <laughs> take this thing up the California coast or something, um, which I think my dad has done. I think he did that. I think he, he rented a sports car, he went off and shot a Magnum, and then he flew home. Like, I mean, it's like one of those things that you just do when you're in California. It says, looks nice, but I love Teslas so much. Teslas are pretty neat. Uh, have you driven a Tesla, Martin? Yeah. So anyway, uh, this was my, like, I, I saw it. I was immediately like, Assetto Corsa has prepared me for this moment. Here's the Tesla <clears throat> that we took, uh, which is pretty cool. There's John. John doesn't ever shoot photos very well. I don't know why. He always looks like a, a grouchy Neanderthal in photos, and I don't know why. Here's Tiago. It's like the, the rare. He's like, um, he's, he's doing the, the Yeti thing here. He's one of <clears throat> John's employees as well in, in, within the SciTech games team who did Windlands, Windlands 2. Working on some new stuff now. Um, he was he's great. He's also a tool fan, so he's good in my book. No, <laughs> but often he's like the grouchy type, but I love I love the grouchy type. Uh, you guys know that. Look at that car again. I just I couldn't get enough of taking pictures of it. It shoots so fucking well. I mean, it's like every picture you take, it's amazing. Uh, never been near an electric car. You would be amazed at what this thing does. The way it pulls, it pulls like. Silly, 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 silly. I'm just taking, keep taking pictures of this thing. All right, so anyway, we got in the Tesla. Uh, John, like, floored it and, um, at some st sections. The thing I have to tell you, this is after a very long day. I'm going to tell you a, a, a short story from <coughs> the two-hour drive up to the Sonoma Valley. So I met these guys down in San Jose. I'd made my way, obviously, uh, past, like, Morningvale and, and all that, and... Uh, Palo Alto and all those things. So I'd gone from San Francisco where I flew in, made my way down to San Jose. The boys flew in. Uh, we got into a car. We waited around for freaking ages uh, for Richard, who's uh, one of the guys who does kind of contract work for John. And um, he, he was at the wrong airport. He was in San Francisco. He was like in uh, one of the external San Francisco airports, like Oakland or something. Um, and we were waiting in the airport, like wait and wait. We literally waited like an hour and a half for him at San Jose. And we're like, where are you? And he was having trouble getting any kind of reception or whatever. And it turned out he was in the wrong airport. And um, so we're like, oh, my God. And so we drove an hour from that point, picked him up. And then we're all in the car. And uh, John's been having fun with his, you know, 100D and, and the pedal made of metal that makes you go like, like, like literally you just like sink back into your seat. It's like no other feeling I've experienced in a car. Um, there's so much power delivery. It's, it's like being on the back of a motorcycle, to be honest, is exactly what it feels like. Um, and then there's things I don't like about it, by the way. I'm not like super, I wouldn't buy a, a Tesla myself. 
I'm not super. Uh, they, they get a lot of utilitarian stuff, like you know the handle that you have that you hang your coat on in the back. Like that doesn't even exist, and um, no direct control over the uh, the opacity of the top of the roof. Um, cup holders are kind of weird, like all that kind of small stuff that they just need to work it out a little bit better than it is at the moment. Um, but back to the story. So I'll tell you the story of, of angry um, angry California cop. Maybe I can tab forward here. What's the next picture? Um, wow, a television. I ended up watching Sideways there getting after we uh, did our wine tour, but I'll, more on that later. So <clears throat> we had this angry-ass like California cop. John was basically uh, driving, and we realized we were on a toll section of the bridge, and there was no like turnaround or anything. So like immediately he's like, oh god! And then there was a break in the cones on the left-hand side where like you'd you'd pay. It was a toll bridge, right? And so he pulls in like real fast uh so there were like two cars and they were going kind of slow and he like pulls in just between those pe those cars through the cones right and there's a cop sitting here and he's like chastising someone else for some traffic error and he just like mad dogs john like fucking crazy mad dog like i thought he was gonna pull this gun out and he's like he pulls his window down and he's like he's like rolls his window down he's like you did not just do that he's like are you stupid or whatever he said i don't even remember what he said but he was so angry. He was so fucking angry. It's like you had run over his mother. Like that's the level of anger that was in this guy's face. And and he was shouting to John and uh, John was like, you could tell flushed with like, <laughs> you know, what did I do? It's like, um, oh my God. And he's like, you wanna cause an accident? <laughs> it's just, uh, oh man. And for the next day and a half, we were just talking about California cop. He's probably one of my favorite memories of the whole trip. He was just so pissed off, but literally I thought he, he was like, you know, hand on hip kind of job, like he was gonna pull his gun on John. Uh, did not feel comfortable at that point. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. So, uh, Dang was gonna offer you a ride if you were close enough. What are you guys talking about? Um, Renault Zoe is the cheapest electric car. Ah, interesting, I've not heard of that either. That's an interesting one. Um, okay, so that was a quick, Run there. Here's me and Hamza, uh, and I was just showing him off my stabilizer. He's down in like this little um, incubator, and those guys are working away. He, he's been so cool. Um, it's so funny because like both John and Hamza at different times offered me jobs, and I've turned them both down. But it's like, nah, you can't pay me what I earn. Sorry. Um, this was my quick vlog just outside San Francisco Airport. Again, these are all available on YouTube, so I'm not gonna let them play here. <clears throat> Uh, it was Vivian who, um, many of you will know, Vivian is, um, she does all kinds of VR stuff. She works with um, <coughs> the kind of professional esports leagues as well. Has a podcast, all that kind of stuff. Vivian's awesome. Uh, also a cancer survivor, which is like crazy. Uh, when I met her, she had like super, super short hair. and um, But she's just like really lovely, uh, super nice girl. Uh, and then Brad, who I only met there, Brad, he's kind of, he's, he's a nutcase, another, uh, he's a broadcast personality for the VR Master League. There's a photo of Richard. These are just smug photos, Richard, me. Um, I don't know why. Okay, here's us charging the Tesla. This is the downside of a Tesla, right? You have to sit it in a lot, and you have to find one of these things, which there aren't that many of. In California, there's way more than Scotland. And then you sit it and charge it up. And they're usually at like malls and stuff like that, so you can kind of go and do stuff. Um, and we walked away and we came back and um, it was funny. Like we went away for an hour, came back, and John had accidentally pressed the button that allows it only to charge halfway. It's like, why you would choose to do that? I have no idea. But we're like, ah, the whole point was that we didn't want to waste the hour. So uh, it was funny. We had enough charge to drive on though. Um, and there are white, red, and black Teslas, and I thought that they were pretty cool. Then we went for a studio tour at twit.tv. I had not heard of Twit. I was like, is it Twitch? It's like, no, it's Twit. What's Twit? <laughs> it's like, it's like a technology weekly IT, or I don't know what it stands for. Uh, it was this tiny little studio. It looked like the place that, you know, like, I don't know, Apple started up in the valley. Um, and we walked in and this was their setup. They had a freaking badass setup. Um, you could sit in and watch a live show being uh, being run. And they had this amazing logo in the background. The guy who was doing it, I forget his name. He has this uh, massive tablet and he has basically three people on monitors around him while he's doing this like live podcast. And so we got to see that live, which was really neat. They have a whole studio production setup. It was like, like hot damn. Uh, this is the guy, I forget his name. He doesn't always wear that silly hat. 
Uh, but he was he was a pretty cool dude. Everyone was like going gaga over him uh, at this studio. It was pretty neat, and I was just kind of liking the equipment. <laughs> I was kind of like, after two hours, I was exactly like the other guys. It was like, oh god, man, that was a long fucking show. <laughs> but uh, we've been good with 45 minutes. Uh, the Leo Laporte. Yeah, thanks, Robin. Cheers. Um, awesome dude. Like, I really liked his humor. He was like super... Um, you could tell he was just in control of his show the whole time. Although, uh, being the, again, this guy for the F... I'm this guy for the F Reality Podcast, you know, production lead. <clears throat> I... I really appreciate, really appreciate that they had someone dial in from Skype and the person had ducking enabled on their session. And like the whole show, they didn't realize. So her her audio was like crap the whole time. And I'm like, professional show still taken down by Microsoft's terrible Skype app. Uh, it's just the way it goes, you know. But the mixing desks, their whole setup, it was just, it was a little overwhelming uh, how much that they had. They had, they had a lot. Then we went to a sporting goods shop. And uh, yeah, lots of guns. Lots of guns, real cheap, real cheap, lots of guns. I mean, lots of guns. And I took this shot for Callie, one of my friends, because um, I thought she might like it. She's like, oh no, I don't like that. Uh, and I was like, feck it, okay, it, not enough power or whatever in it, but you, you could buy these, um, you could just buy everything. Look at it, it's even called Savage. <laughs> this is also, this was actually in, um, this was in, was this Sonoma? This must have been in Sonoma. Uh, yeah, this was in Sonoma. So uh, we went to, I don't know, some kind of mall. And then, like, I mean, look at this. Just tell, tell me why this is a problem. Go on. Someone tell me why a BB gun that looks like this might be a small problem. <clears throat> it all starts with Daisy. It sure fucking does. I was like, Jesus, there's no... There's no orange on the barrel or anything. It's just like, it just looks like a fucking handgun. You could rob a bank with that. Oh my God. It wasn't expensive either. It was like, look, look at this. Look at this. That's 20 quid. That's like, that's, that's not, that's ridiculous. What are you doing? Anyway, anyway, so I thought I'd take, look at the background. Sniper scopes. <laughs> this is just like, this is, this is just a random, normal, there was literally night vision sniper scopes, like all this in a tiny little town. <clears throat> Oh look, oh look, it's a full auto, full rate of fire, <laughs> red dot sighted, you know what I mean? It's like, oh my god, this is so ridiculous. It's like, oh, we've got metal detectors, and we've got ARs, oh, it's fine, it's fine. And then there's this, look, this is sleek pistol grip handle, you can kill someone with this, these are metal babies, You can, and it's actually designed for killing, it's designed for killing like squirrels and stuff. And take pride, it's a daisy. This is what like six year olds pull out of their dad's, you know, feckin' toolbox or whatever. There's another one. That's a paintball. It's a it's a CO2 pellet induced uh, paintball gun. And it's like, holy shit. He says, you wonder why we have so many issues in the US. Uh, they are for hunting, exactly. I know they're for hunting. But still, it's like they're available in a store for cheap. You don't need ID to buy them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could have just walked in and bought whatever I wanted. Now, they would have caught me in customs, I think, on the way home. And they would have been like, what's that in your luggage? But <clears throat> now, what about lights? Lightsabers aren't safe. Lightsabers are almost the least safe thing. Except for the good thing is that lightsabers can't cut these uh, security threads. Otherwise, uh, they'd be breaking out of the package. But... <clears throat> Look at this, Star Wars AR game. Lenovo virtual reality headsets for $79.99. Uh, and you can get the uh, the old Lenovo challenge, which used to be a few hundred, um, but still, I was like, even for that price, I'm not buying. And this is uh, this is the, the headset that you get with it, which you may have seen. Oh look, it's Zim, taking a photo. Uh, but that's it, that's the Lenovo thing, if you hadn't seen it before. You could do like one thing with it. Um, some people say it's pretty good. Let's get on to beer. Okay, this is Beer Man. I like to call I like to call him Beer Man. <clears throat> high five, fellow girl. What? Oh, oh, Dar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hi. Representing the, the girl zone. Hey, thanks for coming to the rescue. Appreciate it. Um, so we went to my now favorite in the world, Lagunitas uh, Brewing uh, place. <clears throat> place of brewing. Brewing house. Brewing. Brewing refinery. No, what's it called? Brewing. It was a feckin' bar. 
It was a bar. Uh, it was a brewing, fucking open garden thing. I don't remember. But this guy was in, it was in the so the, the, they had the kind of manufacturing side, and then they had that is, that's the morning after. Where's my photos? Feck it. We'll come back to it. <clears throat> this was breakfast the morning after, uh, which looks pretty good, to be honest. Um, that's what I had, like black beans and stuff. That was that was breakfast with salad, salsa. I don't know. There, are, there is going to be food, by the way. This was what one of the other dudes had. Looked pretty nice. Uh, A1 sauce and potatoes. I, I finally convinced John to try like A1 sauce, and he's like, I'm going to need a bottle of this. It's so nice. A1 sauce. Better than better than the brown sauce here in the uh, in the UK, or HP sauce. <clears throat> so this is where we were. Welcome to Sonoma. This is the Sonoma Valley. Some of you will have heard of the Napa Valley. Yeah. Um, Jeez. Look at that. You know what that is. That's an ad for Whole Foods. That's not a welcome to Sonoma. That's an ad for Whole Foods. I didn't realize that. <clears throat> not into brown sauce? Yeah, another one. Beers and guns. Sounds about right. It is. It is. It is. HP sauce isn't bad either. HP sauce is, uh, is, is all right. Like, um, Yeah, so we got to Sonoma. We had some breakfast at a place in the morning. Don't even remember what it was. This is the part that I loved. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, <clears throat> so you, ha you go to this place, and they have... Uh, flights of beer, right? So we sat down after a long day and we're like, okay. And I was like, just, just give me stuff. And I was like, I generally like lighter beers, but I also like bitters and sour stuff or whatever. Give me something from that. And I said, like, the Aunt Sally looks good. And he's like, oh, you could try it. Do you want to try it? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I tried the daytime, the pills, and the something easy ale. And I was like, boom, boom, boom. Those were all like just standard beers, like not anything to write home about. They were good. They were good. They were nice. I liked them. Um, but that black currant Aunt Sally, holy shit, my favorite beer in the world, and it's on limited release, and I can't get it over here, and no one will send it to me. And oh, it was the best beer of my life. It was amazing. It was this like tart. Uh, no one else liked it. I, I had the other guys try some, but um, oh, I loved it. Oh, it was so good. And then I had this, which was like a chili dog with cheese or something. They called it a brew dog. Oh my god. Oh my god, I've, I've, I had a very good trip, right? And I ate all my salad. I was a good boy. I ate all my salad. Uh, but then I drank all my beer, too. And I picked up a growler, which is amazing. These things, I didn't even know they existed before. It's a 32 ounce, uh, no, sorry, crawler? I think the crawler, maybe a growler. I think it was a growler. I think it was a growler, which is why there's the dog on it. A crawler, I think, is a 64. Someone help me. Black Currant Aunt Sally, exactly. It was amazing. <clears throat> yeah, the Black Currant Aunt Sally was amazing. It, this one. This one. This one was incredible. It was so good. 7.7%, <clears throat> .7%, um, but it was, oh, beautiful. Oh, and I just had to show this off because I thought it was cool. <laughs> um, I think this is just from probably Reddit, uh, the Toolmobile, but I was like, damn it. That's, 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 a, that's a beautiful car and a great picture as well, to be honest. Um, anyway. Right, and then, of course, Karen and I tried No Man's Sky, uh, which led me to this, the No Man's Sky periodic table of materials. Let me have to zoom out there. Um, so we tried from 5,000 miles away uh, on a 2.4 gig network, I think it was, uh, to play with my Oculus Quest by a virtual desktop. Um, Back, connecting all the way back to my computer at home in Scotland, halfway around the world, right? Eight hours different time zone wise, and it worked. It was laggy. It was it was it was there was delay, but it it functioned. So the delay was like this. This is a controller. This is my hand, right? It was like this. So like that. So it was playable. Wasn't comfortable. I did a 350 mile test from London to Edinburgh. Uh, and I think that 500 miles, this is what I'm saying now, 500 miles would be peachy. And that was on a 2.4 gigahertz network, not even five. And it was totally playable and totally comfortable. So 5,000 miles definitely breaks it. I would not recommend 5,000 miles. But I mean, this was the distance that we were, 
this is the distance we were testing, essentially, when I was testing that. And that was on, on pretty poor local Wi-Fi. So maybe if I had a better internet signal, it would have been better. Um, but it, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good enough from what I tested. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you guys, which is pretty nifty. <clears throat> okay, mm, that sounds good and I'm not a beer fan, but I tried that. You should, you can get it, I'm sure. Dar, where, where are you again? You're, you're out that way, aren't you? Um, aren't you in California then? Uh, maybe you're not near your brother then. Um, did you have to do anything special to get it through the firewall? No, 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 no special firewall stuff. It worked on every on the, every hotel network or um, uh, Airbnb that we were at. I stayed in four different places while I was in California. Now this one, this I thought was really neat. Um, sorry, let's zoom in here so you can see this properly. So you got this map at the bottom. This is like an AR Google Maps AR thing, which only works in some cities. And then it gives you this overlay and it tells you where to turn. So you're like holding your phone up, you're like, okay. Huh. And it recognizes the buildings and where you are. And it floats this sign that like has a little bit of motion to it. And it tells you where to turn. So you're like, oh, right, I got to turn left. It's like way easier than like, where am I on the map? And do I have to turn left or right? Like that was cool. Works everywhere. Does it, Martin? Oh, I don't know. Does it? I thought it was limited. That's what I heard anyway. So I'd never seen it before. So I could be wrong. Um, right, these things we've seen. There was this massive, this place is absolutely massive, um, and I did a little bit of a feature on it. I played with my quest in here doing Tea for God and um, one other game, which I have, what was it, uh, v, VR Crisis Brigade, for Crisis Brigade, which is a side quest app, and I played that here, and it was it was really nice. It was cool. They had those, like, crazy... Um, fancy washing machines. But anyway, the, the, the house was absolutely immaculate. Here you go, here's the place we went. Uh, that was the beer garden. Beer garden is what I was looking for when we had all that lovely food and the beers and stuff. And it was brighter than this picture comes out, but uh, that's because I took it just as we were leaving. Um, and by that point, I was at least half pissed. Um, let's see, Google Maps AR. My bro is in the LA area, I'm in Boston. Oh no, well. Maybe he can ship you some, because that stuff is fucking worth it. <laughs> I, I was saying, I was like, I'll pay people three times if you just ship me. Actually, you know what? I'm going to contact your brother. I'm going to be like, Chris, please, do, do a man a solid. I will, I will pay you for the service. Just give me one of these, ship it over, I will fucking pay for it. <laughs> I, I really want, I really want that beer again. I mean, it's ridiculous. And it's on, like, limited release. You cannot, you cannot get it over here. You can't. Um... I, I would I would buy probably I would probably buy two hundred dollars worth of beer just and, and then pay double that just to get that beer again. That's how good it was. It was amazing. I want that beer again. And it was a great drunken state that it put me in uh, it, when I was in the hot tub with the dudes. I'll show you that in a minute. Here it is. Here's my fucking favorite ass beer ever. That is amazing. Different kind of drink altogether. Okay, this was, here's the Twit TV studio. This gives you a better flavor. Like that is a little bit better than, a little bit better than, uh, than my setup. They got cameras, look at the number of cameras that they have pointing at the desk. It's like 17 cameras they've got, it's ridiculous. Isn't it just black current cordial added to beer? No, Martin, no, it's something. It's not like that. Um, it was crazy. Oh, here's. There's the live show. He was pumping ads like crazy, though. That was the thing I wasn't too happy about. And they had like Twitch chat or whatever running on monitors as well, uh, which we could then we could see as well, which was pretty neat. Okay. Uh, this was my. Oh, this is great. This was my like other vlog thing that I did in the house that we were at. <laughs> I'm like walking through the house and then I go out to our massive garage and let me see if we can even hear it. <laughs> this is on YouTube, by the way. I'm not going to show the whole thing. Like, what was that? I just came in from the pool or... 
I must have just taken a shower. So, a quest in here, and uh, see what that's all about. I'm really, really keen to do it. Now, look. Oh! <laughs> you know, you oh god! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit! <laughs> no, I wasn't naked. Thank god. I wouldn't be walking around the house naked anyway. No, the dudes in the house. I fucking would if it was just me. I don't. I'm not shy about that stuff. Um, now we went the day after on the. So we did that on the Saturday. I'm out with the guys the Sunday, and then this was on a Monday. On a Monday, we did a wine tour, which I had, um, which I had arranged, and all that kind of stuff. So <coughs> there's not much too exciting there for you guys, anyway. Um, and we went to this place. I felt bad because the lady's like, "We don't usually take walk-ins." I'm like, "It says it on your fucking website, you take walk-ins," or like we try to accommodate. And so these are the guys I went with. You'll see, pretty cool. Um, so this is an example. Karen was like, you drank three bottles of wine. I was like, no, it wasn't three bottles of wine. It was a tasting, for effect's sake. So like, this is how much wine you have in a tasting, right? It's not like loads. But again, this is like at 9.30 in the morning. So, you know, you started off with like three beers. This is a bit of a shaky can, but that's a start in our wine tour. I thought we were gonna get totally sloshed. We, we, we really didn't. Um, I think it was the fear of the snakes. Uh, so this, they opened the door and it was like, oh shit. Maybe this wasn't as, um, this isn't as, awe-inspiring as it was for us but like she like we just sat in this like room and we're like okay it was felt pretty boxy and then as she opens the door it's like we're staring out into like beautiful this beautiful valley vineyard and it was like whoa I know that doesn't show off in the photo but we were blown away by that all three of us it was like it was just amazing so um, where are we so this was it this was this was the first place we went was Hansel um, but you can see the kind of like pricing for wine right it's like, not cheap, not cheap. I guess you could go for the 36 a bottle, you know, or something like that. That's Chardonnay, Ugh, whites, yuck. <laughs> I'm not a whites person, I, I'm, I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely one for the other stuff. But it was really nice, they did this card. Uh, I think um, uh, John picked up the tab for that one. There's what we tried, so it was a Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and a Cabernet, the cab, like, it was wine, you know, it was like, it was wine, it was wine, and uh, I was just nervous that my selection wasn't going to be great. There was an awesome cat, he was cool, um, got to show the cats for the love of the stream, eh, and uh, that was that, what do we got here, now this was cool, we got to see an underground uh, barrel storage facility, which they showed us, and they had this cool ass chandelier at the top, which is an exploded barrel with a metal thing around it to like show this off and all this stuff was aging and they were talking about uh, this lady was the was the one who showed us um, gave us the kind of tour it was quite cold in there but it, it works like a refrigeration unit which is nice for them there's more a closer up picture of the barrel now to be honest Karen and I have lights that did this kind of a pattern on the on the wall and that pissed me the hell off after we had it for like two, a year and a half and we, we stripped them off the wall now we have naked bulbs again because I just, I don't know, chandelier patterny stuff is like not my thing. This is out the front of it. <clears throat> we were just hanging out. So there's uh, John the other lads, Thiago and Richard and me in my bright green, anti-green screen pants. Really funny little story there just about our uh, ankles right to my left and you'll see this in a second. Uh, John was asking one of the Uber drivers on the way there, and I have a little video with him a little bit later on, um, about about rattlesnakes. He was like, "Hey, um, so do you have uh, you know, do you have rattlesnakes here?" And he's like, "Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah we got fucking loads of rattlesnakes." <laughs> and he's like, "No, no, no, like, like how often would you see one?" He's like, "I see one every day." And he's like, oh, "Okay, well, where are they?" He's like, "Mostly the wineries. They're all around here." And um, and then we walk in and like checking again. John asks the lady who's giving the wine tour and giving the description of Hansel, the winery, and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, "Yeah, so you know, do you ever do you ever see a rattlesnake?" She's like, "Oh yeah, yeah all the time." And he's like, "Well, well, like once a month." And um, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, she's like, no, no, this morning, like just out there, just out the like door that she just opened, and and everyone was like free. And <laughs> John was so freaking out inside. He was trying to play it down, but it was so funny. He was like obviously concerned about the whole thing. 
So we were going on about this, like, California cop and the snake, like, the whole time, uh, just ripping on each other, making each other nervous about the whole thing. Because, you know, you don't want short shoes and stuff because your ankles are exposed. And then they were telling us about how the, the, it's not the big mature rattlesnakes you care about. It's actually the baby rattlesnakes that'll get you because the mature rattlesnakes know how to control their venom. So if they bite like a rat, they'll like pump a little bit of venom into it because then it'll be like, ah, I'm sleepy and it'll die and then they'll eat it, right? And if they sting a human, it's just to kind of like be like, feck off, right? Feck off, human, right? They're not trying to kill you. Um, but a baby rattlesnake's like, fuck you! It like stabs you with the veins and empties all of its venom into your bloodstream and then you die within minutes. So it made us all a little bit nervous. Anyway, just a little bit. National Geographic with Zim. Now, this is the beautiful vineyard that we saw. I mean, again, this isn't that impressive. Hey, Buck. Um, it's not that impressive when you're uh, when you're looking at a photo. But when you've got the air temperature and everything there, oh, man. It was like, it was pretty. Um, it was nice. They were even growing down here. I think I have some photos of it. Where is it? It was like jalapeno or something. What do they have? Oh, that, yeah, they had like some scotch bonnet peppers or something growing there. It was, it was kind of cool. They had a whole bunch of different things. So, right. What's next? Yeah, this is it. This is it. <laughs> this is the sign. This sign clearly didn't make any of us feel any better. <laughs> it was like, shit, we don't have those in Scotland. Oh, my God. That's the bang. Oh, you guys are, you guys are dinging me. What are you? Oh, like this bang with peppers. <laughs> You're dinging my wrist just to... Just to get the thing, get it on stream. Huh? Um, so yeah, that was the uh, venomous snakes, um, which was kind of a fun little thing. Uh, there's maybe that's the Hansel thing. Stop dinging my wrist. My watch keeps dinging, but it's on here. That's funny. Um, that's my perfect circle shirt. Let's see that later. All right, enough of these. Yeah, that, that was that was it. They looked really good. I was like, I don't think I've seen uh, chili peppers like that before, but I was like, hmm. Mm, those look those look good. But then you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna be like ghost peppers or something. <laughs> or is that a jalapeno? Is that actually a jalapeno? No, that's that's gotta be a chili pepper, right? I am not a cultivist. Does anyone know better? That's gotta be chili peppers, yeah? There, there read it. Read it. Read it and wait. Sim had an idea. What are you guys doing? What the hell do I do my what? 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 <laughs> uh. <coughs> uh, some, I just see Zim had an idea. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know. It doesn't come through on my wrist in like chronological order, so it's really confusing. That's going past the fields. The thing I didn't realize about um, grapevines is they're feckin' two-dimensional. They're not like a normal bush. Looks like jalapenos since they turned green. I think it went the other way though. I think they went green to red, right? Um, they are red and green. Size-wise, that's my guess. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna clear it. Um, so they were like, they were really flat. They were like, like really flat. Like as if you took a bush and you ran over it and then they were just standing there. And I was like, really? That's not how I imagined them to look like. And it was just, so much of it. I mean, it was all over the place. Of course, it was wine country, but then um, we stumbled upon this little place, which was uh, a very highly recommended by the internet Italian place in Sonoma, which was run by the Godfather. I think this is, do I have a picture of the guy? I don't know. He was amazing. He was literally the Godfather. He's like, he went up to this old lady. This is the place, by the way. If you're ever Della, Della, Delia Santina's uh, place, right? So <coughs> he went up to this old lady. And like, how are you liking the food? And she was there and she'd obviously eaten everything on the plate that was like pasta, but left like the broccoli. It's like, now lady, you're not gonna disappoint me, right? You're gonna eat broccoli. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> he was like putting the he was putting the muscle on this woman. And she's like, yeah, it's funny, funny. And he's like, I'm not joking. <laughs> and she starts eating the broccoli. It was fucking awesome. It was so good. Oh my god, it was brilliant. It was freaking amazing. It was so good. And I know someone is somewhere in Stitches uh, loving themselves right now. Now, th this is what I call 
uh, John John's look of death. Uh, so he's like he's he's sat there, right? He's sat there and he's like he's he's ordering or whatever, and you know we're we're we're, we're ready. We. We just had lots of beer the night before. <laughs> he always like gives me this death look. Like, are you taking a photo of me, Tiago? That's like a lovely picture of Tiago. I should I should send that to him. He would probably like that. Um, they had great uh, olive oil, which is weird. It was just bread and olive oil that they gave us at the beginning, and it was like, wow, this is nice olive oil. Um, that's what I ate. I told you to get hungry on this fucking thing. It's 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 fresh gnocchi, um, and it was. The best gnocchi I've ever had. It was literally perfect, and I keep saying that. But this trip, the trip, the food on this trip was amazing. And I've got a wife who's Karen. Karen does an incredible food that's really good for you and homemade and all that stuff. This stuff was like, I'm not saying it, it doesn't knock your stuff, Karen. It's just really good. It's just really good. If you're ever in Sonoma, go to this place. Trust me. Go to this place. Order anything. All of our dishes were incredible. Okay, he says that looks like nice food. Not like that sushi crab you showed. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just nuts. This was my dessert, which was like a lemon tart or something. Karen's gonna. This is the problem. Anytime I do one of these rerolls, re Karen's like, "So that's what you were up to, you fecker." I was tooling around with the kids and. <laughs> Scotland. She had a nice trip, though. I have at least one photo of her in here, so you can see what she was up to while I was in California. And remember, I was suffering a lot from my back and neck and stuff, so it wasn't all just fun and beer, okay? I just want you to know that it looks like it was, but it really wasn't all fun and beer. Uh, so that's it. Uh, De Los Santinas, uh, which was absolutely amazing. Sushi's amazing, sponsored by Honda. You missed the Japanese embarrassment section buck but uh yeah anyway never had gnocchi before it's like it's potato pasta basically um yeah not the stuff he showed yeah you should see it buck uh i'm, I'm half tempted to, to rewind but um you know we'll do it here's john this is the, the the last place where we actually bought bottles so we got this bottle from this was by jacuzzi we actually went so the family um jacuzzi they um had a winery for some time uh, i don't know if it's 20 or 30 years uh it's the same company who got famous for their hot tubs um and then you know named jacuzzi and so this is john out in the winery we were just laughing about snakes and stuff being out there <laughs> now one of us should run through the run through the uh the vineyard and get the snakes it was probably the least posh of the lot uh and it was kind of touristy because they built this place for it i'll show it to you in a minute uh, but it was still nice, and this was this was our end of the wine tour that I'd planned for us, um, which was quite nice. So we just shared a glass of wine, and by the end, none, none of us were drunk. Um, I had taken a break for it. Some people said I, I, I visited um, Tuscany in this shot. Uh, this is the front of, of there, or whatever. And it does, it looks a lot like um, the Tus early Tuscany demo um, back in the day, so that was all that. This, this was the wine place yeah. underneath. I'll just let it do the walk through at like low volume so you've got that and read chat and stuff. Good night, er uh, good night Karen. Yeah, I know you, get, you gotta sleep, it's important. It's definitely an important thing. So they showed us all these barrels. They were like really nice looking barrels. And <laughs> Not that I'd be judging barrels or anything. And she gave us this great tour. She was lovely lass. Um, told us everything we wanted to know. <clears throat> then she looked at me and like, are you filming this? Are you filming this? These are trade secrets. Um, and then there was this, this kind of, <coughs> so that you've basically got in various, you actually see it, they've got these covers over basically just wine in these like pots that they squish the grapes in or whatever. And, and that's that. That's, that's it. They just basically, that sluice that you can see there, the gray sluice, they just throw the devined grapes or sometimes the grapes on the vine and that, and then they smash it all together and then whatever, they boil it or whatever they do with it. I, I paid attention, but it's all gone out of my head now. Um, here was the thing I did earlier. So it kind of tells you the kind of game I was playing, um, but I can't tell you anything more about that. But uh, it was a game I was playing. It'll be out next week, be announced next week. I don't think it'll be out until some later time. Uh, so that's the valley or whatever, blah, 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 right? I'll just, I think I tried to start my um, bloggy thing here like three times and people kept interrupting me. Um, 
this was our flyby. This is what I mean. Look at them. They're feckin' flat. They're flat. They're pretty much all flat. It's ridiculous. This guy was amazing. He was my favorite Uber driver the whole trip. He was just incredible. That's me just... This is... This is ridiculous, by the way. This picture is taken with a new iPhone. This is why I wanted a new iPhone. In nearly pitch black. This was its night mode. Look at the detail! That's fucking ridiculous. You can see every ridge of my forehead. <laughs> That's a lot of ridges. Look at that. So one, two, three, four. I've got a quadra ridge already. Jeez. That is some ridged forehead. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, like I was like really impressed with uh, with the image quality of that. I almost I almost wanted to buy it. All right. Now, <clears throat> I am going to show you this. I'm going to show you this lovely thing. Here we go. Boom. This guy is funny as hell, this guy. No. Come on, man. You need to see you want all to me. Stay out of the for track of those woods over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like I said, you start walking up there. Let's go slow. Look at that. You'll find one there. You'll find definitely when it's on there. That's for sure. That was it. Um, he didn't make jokes then. But it, all the way up, he was amazing. He was an amazing dude. Loved him. Now, uh, for the fun part. So we decided to do a photo shoot uh, in, the, <laughs> in the hot tub. If you haven't seen this shot, um, it's pretty fun. So it was me. It was four dudes in a hot tub. And, um, yeah. Uh, there's me. So this is John's quest. I would not have risked my quest. And he's like, I've got a quest. You can do it. Why not? <coughs> I'm not naked in the hot tub. Uh, you can see my suit there. Um, and, and he was like, right, I'm going to put it on your head. I'm going to dry your arms off. All this kind of stuff. I crim cringe at the picture for the safety of the quest. Yeah, it was a, uh, I think it was a prototype. See that? I think that was a prototype build or whatever. One of the ones that um, I'm sure I, I cringed as well. Like I would have never done the shot. And trust me, people who saw it were like, ah! like didn't like it and had that reaction. Uh, some people thought it was hilarious. There is the picture. So that's one of them. Um, of course, I didn't do safety straps or whatever, and I probably should have. And then there's that one. And we basically just doctored it a little bit uh, and ended up with the final shot. I don't remember. Where was it? Here somewhere? That was it. There you go. But I, I think it was totally worth it. Um, the cool thing was the hot tub had these, like, glowy lights in it as well. And <laughs> this one is just funny. It makes uh, Chiago look like a total gangster. And again, as I said, John never, he never looks good <laughs> in photos. I don't know why. He always has his face on him, like... You know, it's um, like a pissed off cop or something, but it was funny. Risque, risky and risque, a twofer. Yeah, definitely. This is very strange. Zim's sexual journey. <laughs> oh man, in the past, you drop a toaster in the tub. In the future, you drop VR and HMDs. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh man, no, but it's just that, it's that face he pulls. It's so funny. It's so funny. Uh, so we were doing, we were doing all these different shots and it was just loads of fun to just like have fun. And we were just, I chilled in that hot tub for a total of probably 11 hours or something. We tried different light settings on the tub and like night sequences. Uh, tried to do a kind of like a, a shooter look, all this kind of stuff. It was, it was just fun. It was fun. I mean, it's pretty neat uh, to have these shots. So I have VR'd in like so many places now. It's so funny. Um, come on now. It's having trouble. Yeah, see that? Ah, but that? Come on, tell me that. Tell me that's not cool to have done. I mean, you could like it almost looks like it was photoshopped, but it wasn't. Um, all right, I might even have. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Welcome to Zim's. Uh... <laughs> Welcome to. Uh, uh, maybe this is why, Dutch Yeah, uh, what do you think? I think this might be it. This might be. Is it why all the gay guys follow me? Maybe. Maybe. What's this then? All right, what is this? Oh, I'm just showing off the, it's such a cool, it was like a little piece of Italy in, this, in the middle of um, Sonoma. Um, what is this then? I just can't possibly do cheese right, can That's put it up at the end, uh, the, 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 Oh, that's where jo John's dissing cheese. This is what the place looked like. We had it all to ourselves. It was Monday. Now this, We're just, Dutch, just in terms of worldwide cheese, if you would go for Dutch. Dutch. Oh, the Dutch, Gorda, the Dutch uh, do, no, the Dutch do very good. 
<laughs> We're talking about Jesus. Like, uh, uh, kidnappers are now using quests instead of blindfolds. Here's an example. Yes, exactly. Right. Um, but that courtyard was amazing. It says, cheers. I need to go do IRL stuff. Cheers, Rob. No worries. No worries. That was the cat that we had. It was like a lovely cat at the, uh, at the first winery we went to. This was the back of the Airbnb with the hot tub. It was like, he, he really knows how to book a place. Like this, this place was amazing. It's really cool. That, that, that was my room. <laughs> it was like, fucking A. Um, but yeah. What can I say? You, you hang with the side tech guys, like they treat you right. Um, this was awesome. So coming back when we were heading back towards to go to Oculus Connect, um, we had, and I will go as long as it takes to finish the show, by the way. I will. Um, but it's probably just another hour of stuff, I'd say, because the Oculus Connect to go pretty quick. Because it was actually a pretty quick show over two days. So we're now on the uh, Tuesday. Um, Oculus Connect was Wednesday, Thursday. So on the Tuesday, we uh, drove back, and there was this, like, beautiful uh, fog uh, over uh, San Francisco Bridge, Golden Gate. Um, which is pretty cool. And we were like convinced we were seeing Alcatraz and I'm not sure we really were. I don't know why this is hopping to the mall, but there was a new uh, void starting off. And I always take a photo of this when I'm in California because it looks like just dropping balls and I, I don't know why that attracts me, but it's, <clears throat> it is the way it is. Uh, what was this, Jamba Juice? I always do this like Jamba Juice and Sushi thing when we're at that particular place just because it's like, yay, I get to do something. This was one of the funniest things. I just tweeted this out earlier. This is one of the funniest things I think I've ever seen, right? So look at this. What do you have? You have 199 and 249 for a go, right? 399 for an Oculus Quest, and then 339, or sorry, 399 for a Rift S, right? <clears throat> um, or sorry, and then they have so the Oculus Quest, Oculus Quest, bigger, um, bigger Oculus Quest, and Rift S, right? This product is kept in a secure location. This product is kept in a secure location. This product is kept in a secure location. This is the Oculus Go. <laughs> we don't care about this one. This was in uh, Best Buy. And I was like, fuck, Jesus, last year it wasn't this way. Um, oh, they've even got the Oculus Go case. It was hiding in the side. I didn't even see it. Um, do I? I don't have... Oh, I do have the Oculus Go case. I use it. It's, it's awesome. I like it. Um, but yeah, I was... I loved that. That was so funny. And even the other... And so this is the... This was, this was the boost, like... Pricer. Yeah, it was just your standard Best Buy thing, but I just was laughing my ass off at that. I was like, that is insane. The poor Go. I really like the Go. Um, <clears throat> I'm also surprised they haven't reduced the price. I thought it would be at least $99 by now because um, I don't think they've killed it with the Quest. It's still a great little intro unit is the thing, but I, I don't think it'll be long for this world. Now, there's the Oculus Quest earbuds, and I was like, mm, 49 bucks. that's not too bad, but am I ever going to use it? No. Not in the way that I use my quest. <clears throat> um, this is something that I saw. I did not know about. And I wanted you all to, to know about. It is augmented reality Lego. And I was like, we could totally do this with the kids. Um, it's pity Karen's gone to bed now. But I will have to bring this up to her. Um, so, yeah. Basically, uh, you put together a Lego build. And then you use an app to show you AR stuff. So like you can see ghosts around this one or whatever. And this one's a graveyard. Great. More ghosts. I love how like badass. Look at this. This is girl power right here. Isn't it? Look at her face. She is like, this is like, you, can you imagine her against the government? I can. There should be, there should be like a government version of this. What do you have? You got Spencer Parker. I guess that's Parker. Yeah. Parker's the one with the attitude. Jack, Mr. Branson, Skeleton, and Mamali. I don't know who that is. But anyway, I thought these were cool, and it was like, I should probably get one of these kits. Uh, that one was ban Banana Lab. Okay. Um, I did not know that that's what that was called. What's this one? Banana Grab. Okay. Banana Lab or Banana Grab? Well, you have options anyway. Um... This was the first day Oculus Mixer. Uh, I wasn't judging this man. I was not pointing at anything in particular in this scene. Uh, I was holding, however, my newly acquired Oculus Connect statutory water bottle, which is something they've given away 
<clears throat> for the last three Oculus Connects, everyone I've been to. Every Connect before it, before I started going, they were giving away headsets. I feel a little bit, I mean, <laughs> it's like a $400 ticket. I kept saying $500, and then someone corrected me. Now here's <clears throat> me wandering around playing Tea for God. I wasn't exactly exciting in this. It, I just, I'm wandering in this giant, wanted to give you a flavor of how big it was. It was, I love having spaces like that. Anytime I have it with me, it's like, boom. <clears throat> oh, by the way, I'm giving away their uh, passcode for their Wi-Fi because it's been that since the very beginning. Code check is handy. You were so judging him. I might have been. Might have been. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that they give out, uh, which is not really food, right? I didn't touch any of this stuff. Okay, that's kind of food. Oh, those are chocolate dipped strawberries. I didn't see that. Shit, I took the picture. I thought it was all this crap in the front. Oh, damn it. I would have had them. Okay, this is the problem. Why Why do I relive the past? Why? I could have had fruit and chocolate fucking dipped strawberries. See you, Buck, man. Oh, oh have to bounce... My oh, man, back to work tomorrow after a week off. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. you want to be well slept for that one, Buck. Good night, man. Hot tub time machine. We were looking at this because we were in a hot tub. And apparently this is a movie. I've not watched this. I don't know if anyone else has ever seen it. Uh, but it's it's that way. <clears throat> Got to meet this guy. Hi, May. From uh, the guys behind O-Shape. He's, he was so nice. He's been nice um, since after having met me. We just hung out for a while. He was like the first dude I ran into. I was like, you're the O-Shape guy. It was like freaking cool. It was so nice. It was so funny. I was giving out to people on Twitter as well uh, earlier on. I was like, you can't misrepresent Beat Saber by showing up to Oculus Connect in a Beat Saber t-shirt. And uh, <clears throat> here's me representing Black Box VR even though I'm not one of them. Oops. <clears throat> By mistake. Uh, what was this? This was just me updating my kids. And just loading the Tesla. The Tesla, for people who don't know, you load luggage in the front and the back. Uh, it's called the frunk, just like just like the index. Okay, so that was Jaime. Um, what's this? This is me in, that's just me in the Tesla as we're going, nothing special. This was kind of neat. I thought this was kind of cool, but like we were just there were just so much there were just so many vineyards the whole way The whole way. All right. This is what it looks like if you go to oculus connect on the first day um, You have people sitting out at the grass and you're just kind of like milling around and introducing yourself to people and That's generally what the way oculus connect goes. So if you're ever interested in going uh, That's the way it's gonna go. Yeah Okay Boom. Uh, HTTM was pook what is, I don't even know what that stands for. I probably should. Here you go. So it's, it's like it's real busy inside, real busy outside. I liked being outside because of the weather. It was like, eh, just take it while I can get it, please. Yeah. Um, there are loads of cool people. You might even see some some people you know, if you're industry, if you're into the industry. I'm just trying. Like these guys are clearly hitting it off. Yeah. Look at them. Yeah. He looks really. He looks really into that guy. I don't know, there's just something about his body language, right? Like, he seems to be leaning in at, like, 15 degrees. Uh, anything else we can see that's funny? I always like photos for, like, what did we capture? Someone, like, giving someone, an, uh, like, an underhanded payment or something. Okay, anyway. There's me. This, is, this was my obligatory uh, Oculus Connect 6 photo. I hate taking that photo, but it's fine. Uh, oh, this is our Onward friend. Ah, Dan. Dan's awesome. He's cool. Community manager for Onward. Um, it's awesome. I th I've been on this one. I think this is it. I crossed it. Oh when I went to the this is cool. This is what I mean. Check this out. Like it was like so nice and like misty, foggy stuff. It was like, and we're like, that's Alcatraz. It's just out there. It was. Uh, I don't think it actually was Alcatraz. But that was that. Um, I hope you guys have been enjoying this. I, like, I know th this is kind of funny, and I, I take a long time uh, to go through this, but it's like, I f I, if I don't catalog it, I will forget, and then I'll never do it again. Can you guess who that's for? You know, that's uh, good old Viper. I found Waldo. Almost. Yeah, that's almost Waldo. Uh, those of you who don't know him, that's Lonely Viper, uh, who was there as well. 
cool, cool dude. These are the guys behind ProTube. Uh, so I was just meeting these guys for the first time. Uh, they'd obviously sent me the Force Tube, and I've, I've, I've done work with them. Uh, that way, it's like really cool. They sponsored the F Reality stuff as well, so that was Onward who sponsored us. This guy, Drash. Do you guys know Drash? Drash is from, um, uh, in fact, what's that space app? Um, uh, bollocks. Kings of the fucking, oh, Jesus. Someone, okay, one of you VR people is going to help me out here because my brain is mush right now. Um, what does he say? Okay, it's Steve, I think. Drash. I thought he was in the UK for the longest time. I thought Drash was in the UK. Um, but he did that uh, lovely app from the early Oculus days. I'm trying to remember now. The Giants of the fucking Causeway or whatever it's called. Um, where you go from planet to planet to planet to planet. It's got like a four-piece name if I'm not mistaken. And um, lovely. It's like one of the first educational apps that really for me proved what VR was like. It was really cool meeting him. Uh, for the first time. There's this guy, Moik. Moik the Squid. <clears throat> I enjoy this uh, stream. I find it interesting. Thanks, uh, Steve. Appreciate it. To be honest, it's better than the streams where you put on the microwave and wave your arms around. <laughs> Thanks, Ninth. Uh, so this is Moik. He, he DJs in Wave VR <clears throat> and uh, does VR stuff uh, during the day and stuff like that. He's, he's really cool. So I liked his, uh, his, his outfit was like a bit like The Undertaker. <clears throat> the old wrestler. Uh, here's Thomas. Thomas, I, I, I met him originally at uh, VRLA, and he's coming out with Cubism. He's another uh, indie dev. Definitely support this guy. This guy's fucking awesome. He's got the, like the best attitude. He's always like super smiley. He's got a great app. He made a puzzle with my name on it, which was awesome. Uh, and um, like he did that without asking me because I normally when devs are like, hey, do you want to be in my game? I'm like, no, I just want you to make a great game. Just like don't focus on me. I, I don't have to be painted in your game, and I don't think. Oh, like, I wouldn't appreciate it. Like, if I see Mike's name again, I'm like, fucking, you know, <laughs> who's blowing who? And it's the same thing, like, generally, unless it's, like, an Easter egg, Easter eggs are fine. But <clears throat> if it's, like, something overt and it, you, you build them into the core gameplay, it's, like, it's just a person. Why does why does that person deserve to be in your game over a character with actual story or whatever? Like, just put, just make your game. Make your game. And then, you know, people can critique it or whatever, but personalities and stuff, in my opinion, don't belong in games. Now, maybe it, it's a way to, you know, get people hyped up and talking about your game, but I just think it's, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. It's not my thing. This is SVVR. I went there. Um, this was shortly before I met the F Reality guys. I didn't expect to be fish hooked by so many people. It was really hard to kind of get in there and get out with all people be like, oh, Zimmy, and we just started talking and like, I need to go for dinner. And it was kind of annoying, um, but in a good way, in the kind of good kind of way where you're like, I've got a commitment, but I, I can't just flob people who were asking me. So this is, they did actually have a nice little platter there. It's a meetup, you pay a tenner, uh, you go in and do your thing. That's all good. That's your SVPR meetup. And they've been doing that for a while. Uh, that was the stage and they were doing it. There's uh, Ben Lang. Hello, Mr. Road to VR. He's looking very snobby at this fella. I don't know, it's funny because he's usually a smiley dude. He's usually got a, a grin on his face. Uh, there's one of the new YouTubers, Alex VR. I got to meet him as well a little bit later on. He was asking about stuff. I think that's Kent Bai, if I'm not mistaken. Look at that shirt. That Kent? No, I don't think so. He's just another person with a shirt. Um, that's Alexander Metch's game, uh, Starship Commander, which is like was an arcade thing. Anyone else to recognize? No. That's it. That's one, obviously one of the Servios people. I didn't actually get to say hello to them this time, but they were there. Um, that's my onward picture, which was just a... Uh, I was like, we're going to make a badass onward picture, except for I left my Apple Watch on, which was probably a mistake. Um, but yeah, I was like, yeah, just because the onward guys gave me one of those. Who's blowing who? <laughs> this was once a family stream. See you, Martin? Yeah, uh, cheers, dude. I know, I know school for kids is a is the thing. <coughs> I gotta make sure to get that sleep. Uh, the VR Respawn team were really nice, and they, this is a horrible face, look at me. Um, they gave me this uh, care package, which had like a jersey and stuff in it. Um, this is what they said, it was like really nice. So the, the nicest thing in here, my favorite thing overall, let's see, I think it's this one. Poonanners says, you'll look good in pink, right? Um, which, uh, which is awesome. I like Nightfire, Nightfire is another buddy. 
This is the true OG VR streamer. Lots of love. He is such a good guy. Look at that. They even made a button pin of us for every reality. Like this was. Uh, I think that was. I think that was um, definitely Vivian did that. She she constructed most of this. And I said, Zim, thanks for all your support and helping in the community, Viv. Uh, reality is overrated by Trip, DJ Nikki from Stealth Shampoo, and uh, the other Brad in the room by Sleepy. That was good. And I love that they picked this upside down uh, bear sticker. That is me, like 100%. There you go. So that was very, very nice of them. This is me struggling. Struggling. Have you ever tried to take a picture of your back when you're on your own? I took three pictures and I <laughs> I was kicking my, I was like, how the fuck am I gonna do this? I couldn't think of any logical way to do it. I was trying my best. I was like, I wanted to tweet about the, the, the nice gift I'd gotten and <laughs> I'm trying my best to take shots of it. Instead, I just shoot my ass. I guess that's my ass. Um, anyway, that was that. So here is this, what is this? It's me talking to people. That's that. That's the. We got a few bits. Um, they gave us a. That's beer. That's that. That's that. What did I do? To implement a a wireless player. I think I did this. This was one of my updates. Clearly. I'm pretty sure I uploaded that. So again, if you want to see it, then it's there. Um. Okay. Breaking news time. If you didn't know, this is when I got my demonstration from John of Windlands. Uh, Windlands 1 running in Oculus Quest. And I was gutted to learn that I don't think they're going to be allowed, for whatever reason. I don't think John went into detail. I don't remember if he did. It ran perfectly, by the way. I ran the, I ran the first uh, level in the quest. It was absolutely perfect. It was lovely. It worked really well in the quest. Uh, but I think they're blocked by Oculus. And obviously they get quite a close relationship with Oculus. They don't want to rock the boat or whatever, and, and that's fine. Um, but I was glad he was at least showing the demo off because it was like, it works. We can put it. Don't you want it? And it's like... This is yet another, there's so many apps that I feel are caught behind the filter and it's like, uh, it's just annoying. It's annoying. I want Windlands on Quest. That people deserve to be able to play Windlands. It was amazing. It really helped me get my VR legs and um, to not, and the first, the first one is so magical. It's so zen. Ah, anyway. Here's me in the Stuart lands. wouldn't like you saying that. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, that didn't work. So there's Sam Watts in the background. He's cool. I love Sam. He's such a cool dog. Um, uh, he's from Nick Real. Um, they do interactive stuff. A lot of uh, contract projects for governments and companies and stuff like that as well. So a lot more of the kind of more serious stuff. And then these guys are, these guys are from the Woodlands team, obviously. Uh, there's me doing my thing. I saw that picture already. That's a beer. <laughs> this is what it's like. So you get there to Oculus Connect early, right? And then you're in a fucking queue to go to see the thing. And you're standing in this queue for like an hour, hour and a half. And that's the keynote. Um, and I always stand there and wait for ages. Um, and I usually get a pretty cool seat. Um, and I got a good seat. I got a good seat. Nice up front and stuff. There's my, uh, there's my Oculus Connect pass. I always fix my pass, though, because they feck it up, right? Because it's like... Look at this. Where's the Zim on this? Right, right. Like it, it said, it said my name, and then it says Zim VR Live in teeny, teeny, tiny, <laughs> tiny text. It's like surely that's what I would want people to read. So I kind of fixed it with a with a permanent marker. So always bring a permanent marker. You remember I said earlier duct tape is really super handy. Blue tack is super handy. Permanent marker. Uh, I actually initially this is this is how you know how inflated my head got in 2016. I was taking the permanent mark around in case anyone wanted a signature. <laughs> it's like, who, who even asks for a signature these days? And you have to be so fucking megastar. And I, I still carry it, but I carry it for this type of reason, not because I think anyone's going to ask for a signature. And please don't ask me for a signature. I'd probably be like weirded out if you did. And I'd be like, no, I don't have a Zim signature. Um, uh, so this is what it looks like. So you can see loads of people, blah, 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 blah. 
long, long queue, right, all the way. So I was in a pretty good spot, and this goes back and back and back and back and back and back and back all the way. Uh, so, you know, if you do go to Oculus Connect, get to the queue early if you want a good seat. Then here I am. There I am. I'm like two seats from the front, and that was good. What if I asked? What if you asked? What if you asked what? This is me eating my own head. Okay, what? What do you mean, ninth? What if you asked what? Now this is, I love their art. They always do like really cool like art and stuff like that. I wasn't a huge fan of the OC6 logo. Um, uh, it's all right, it fits with the vibe. They did this whole kind of, they just keep trying to be Apple, you know, but it seems to work for them, which is fine. And then if you guys didn't see it, again, I did all these different, um, uh, all these different like vlog things. Uh, this was kind of early on in the whole thing. Um, and the date of them. So if you do want to catch any of the stuff, you can. I think I've said that about 17 times now. Is this a video? No. This was when Zuckerberg came on stage and my white balance or whatever was quite off, but that's him. He's been there all three years that I've been there. Um, coincidence? Hmm, maybe not. No <laughs> SIGS pics are always better. Exactly, like, the selfie has taken, uh, taken part of that, right? Like, you, no one needs a signature anymore. It's like, just, can I get a selfie? That's a good point. I never thought about that. Thanks. Thanks, Dar. Um, Oculus Quest, right? Boom. All these games. Look at all these games. Now, I love when they throw this stuff up because it looks beautiful on the screen that they have. And it's just, like, really nice to see. Um, they missed out, like, showing games in this kind of tiled format um, in, in a previous year. So I'm glad they brought it back. This was a pretty big announcement that they'd had 100 million spent already in the Oculus Store. Then he moved on to talk about Oculus Link, uh, which is pretty neat. So for those of you who haven't seen this already, Oculus Link is a cable, basically, USB-C to USB-C cable, that's going to connect your Link to uh, your PC and allow you to play things from your Quest, if you have a beefy enough PC. You don't have to buy a Rift headset or whatever. Um, hmm. Well, look, 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 I love this face on Zuckerberg. I mean, does this not just tell you the state of affairs? It's like... <laughs> he looks like he's in serious pain. Like, he literally looks like someone just stubbed him on the toe or something. Mm. Kicked him in the shins. It, it is Zuckerberg, yeah. And then here's him telling us about the Oculus Link and how that's all going to work. Um, and how that was going to come in November, right? So support for that is coming November, and you're able to get a cable and all that kind of thing. It's going to be fun when it actually lands, see how, see how good it is. Um, by the way, most, it's funny that they have in their product shots it like dropping off the side, because most people I see it routed up and over the band of the head strap with some kind of like cable ties, right? And so then he went on to talk about all this stuff. I'm not going to go, I'm going to zip through this stuff, because most of you have seen the Oculus Connect things. Um, we were talking about finger tracking in the headset and this video rolls and everyone's like, well, what's this about? Uh, and she actually interacts with the menus with her hands. That was awesome. Uh, and then she puts her hands in the fire and is like, oh, and then she's like, oh no, I should probably have remembered to wash my hands after the bathroom. Um, that wasn't part of it. That's, uh, Waltz of the Wizards, blah, 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 blah. Gives it to this dude who's way too smiley. He's like, oh, what? What is this? I am seasoned gentleman. Your goal is to locate and mark water damage. Tap the water to start. Water damage. Uh, I think they were showing this for business purposes. So there you go. There's, um, there's a good example of, of what the finger tracking, hand tracking, is going to do with the quest. So pretty nifty. I'm just coming. This guy looks like he's coming for me. Um, Flick through here. Yeah, anytime someone pops out of a headset and has this look, like, wow, it's so magical. He's looking at his hands instead of another human being. Yeah, this, yeah, seriously, dude. I swear, the, the American cheese factor in these things is just, like, ridiculous. It just really is. And, uh, oh, man. I got flame in my hand. Okay, I'm just going to zip through this because this is, like, totally the stuff that you guys already know. This I liked. One of my favorite demonstrations. He's like, this is what you needed six months ago. You needed, you know, the cameras, and actually you probably needed a third camera. Uh, you needed the Oculus 
touch controller's original, original CV1, a laptop, four connections, power. You know, he did a lot. I love that he shows it connected to a laptop, though. Yeah, yeah, that's how we game. It was like, soon, it'll, it'll go from this to this. That's all you need. You know, like, no friction. And that's really cool. That's a really cool thing. A lot of people like hating on Zuckerberg. Um, I think there's a lot of qualities about him that are not good, but um, he does a good presentation. And um, even if someone else writes it, he does a good presentation. All right, one second. My headset just got rolled over three times, I think. What the hell just happened? One second. I got to un untie myself here. Um... I recabled my um, I recabled my headset, so <coughs> I'm going to be careful about the routing of that for now. All right, so we got that. All right, 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 right. And we are getting late, so we better super speed up here. Um, bing, social experiences in VR, and he's like, we're going to take you to Narnia. It's not Narnia, it's Facebook Horizon, which looks like this lovely, colorful land. And if you haven't seen the trailer for it, go watch it. He walked off stage. Everybody was boo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's good old Zuckerberg. You know. Um, 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 um. Okay. And then Andrew comes out, the dude with the dad, uh, and he does this whole presentation. These the graphics were kind of nice. I actually think Oculus did a really good job on the graphics that were animated this time. So whoever they um, asked to produce that for them did a, a very good job. It was very well animated, got the point across. It was kind of fun. I predicted Facebook VR years ago. Yeah, it's coming. And they're definitely coming heavy on it. And this is his avatar, and it's him talking about the game with his dad. I've got this all on video, by the way, on again, on YouTube if you want to watch it. I I did it for the, uh, for the crowd reactions. I, I recorded basically the whole thing. And it's cool, because you hear the reaction. And people were really happy in certain parts of this. They really were. And they talked about Reality Labs, which is a little bit scary. Where they're like, we are going to map everything. You know, we're going to map objects in, in spatial orientation. So the camera is going to be used to basically Google Maps every building, every object, you know, contextually map all of it and store it. And so they showed an example where they'd done that in this room, this bicycle shop. And it was done very well. It was kind of scary. Yeah. Maybe not the most bold of predictions. Yeah. Yeah, you knew it was going to come, right, the second they bought it. Uh, this is, again, this, I am not good uh, at this, you know? It's crazy. It's crazy. Hey, Steve, thank you for that. That was nice. I don't even know if I've got a donation alert for that kind of thing. I hope so. I hope it triggers. Um, but appreciate it. Steve says, uh, happy Monday for you. Nice long stream. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. It's Monday already. That's crazy. Um, appreciate the support, dude. That's nice. Not many people do that. I don't pump it though. So <clears throat> now this came out. Uh, they were gonna release this <clears throat> modification. <laughs> there you go. I wonder what that when that was gonna happen. Um, thank you. Thank you again, Steve. So this was a uh, pass through plus where it takes things that are kind of like barrel distorted, and it, it's actually gonna go ahead and change that so that it's not and actually i can tell you aside aside from some funky weird like artifacts where it's trying to re-manipulate re the environment it's not quite getting it right in the software it does a better job it does a better job so you have your quest on does the pass through and then it, it feels more like the real environment now there's no stereo so you get to watch it because you can easily like think there's stereo and like hit your hand against a desk or knock a plate or not be able to pick it up right because you're it's kind of like you're drunk right so if you're looking to pass through, trying to interact with objects, just go slow, okay? If you're gonna do it, don't go fast, otherwise you'll probably knock something over or break a plate or something like that. But it's been released since. It's out in version nine of the runtime. Uh, you can actually force download future updates uh, from this version of the runtime in Oculus Quest, which is really nice as well. Hard to find, but you can um, go ahead and <clears throat> you're able to do that as well. Hmm. All right, compatibility with Oculus Go apps. Um, this is where they talked about um, releasing Oculus Go apps onto the Quest. 
<clears throat> which now you can do. Actually, that's one thing I need to remember to do on my on my quest and then show people is the Oculus Go thing. I'm going to take a note of that because otherwise I might forget. <clears throat> we might even do some side-by-sides to show Oculus Quest then Oculus Go. Oculus Go on Quest. Cool. We'll come back and do that. Again, Tuesday I'm planning to do a show. So that'll be our first uh, VR show again in how long? Oh my god. Oculus Go apps, I, they don't have narrows. I'm super sad. Now, one of the things they do have, which I'm happy about, is Darknet. Darknet is awesome, that's really cool. Hidden Fortune, I'd stay away from. Thumper, I'd stay away from, it's just not good on that platform. Uh, virtual Desktop works, but what's the point of mirroring? I don't really know. Republic is great. Drift is also very good. Um, Land's End is amazing, yeah. Like, seriously, Pirate Shooter gets on there, but not Narrows. Thank you. <clears throat> Stuart wouldn't like you saying that. All right, all right, all right. I'll hold it off. Sorry. <coughs> all right. <clears throat> Let's go. What's next? Uh, this is about <clears throat> developers getting um, metrics for their titles, which I thought was really cool. I know there's some devs in... Uh, in our audience generally. So um, that was something is worth watch, watching stuff about. Now this is something I found very jarring. They show the Oculus linked, uh, sorry, the Oculus link like this. Who's gonna use the headset that way? I just, maybe, maybe. Um, it's horrendous though. It's like this horrible bastardization back stuff. Uh, this is about the hand tracking. They go on about that. Uh, what else did they talk about? This is all about the social networking side. I'm just going to pass through most of this. She was talking about data. I wonder why still why Wands didn't port over from the go. Um, Wands was... Yeah, it's a good point. Wands, Wands went to PSVR recently, right? Did it come to Quest? It might actually be on Quest now. My brain is telling me it might be. Um, check it again. Check it again. Oh look, these are all the different business use cases and then I basically stopped. When this woman came on stage, <clears throat> I kind of lost all interest. I forget where she was from, I think she was from Johnson & Johnson. I'm like, oh, corporate corporate lady, no, thank you, no thank you. Um, but this is really neat, this is really, really neat. So it's like, if I want to own a business that uses multiple Oculus devices, there is now the ability to register and support like patching and all that kind of stuff in a shared application. See this device fleet thing? This is awesome. So many people wanted this in a business sense. And like they just they just needed it. They really did. So I'm glad that they had it. Now what is this? This was ILMX Labs talking about the new Star Wars, which had just come out, and I actually played it that night. And then this fella, who's taken over from just uh, Jason Rubin comes on stage and he talks about two massive titles that are landing, Asgard's Wrath and Stormland, both of which have been polished by Oculus Studios for the longest of times. I've played both of them um, quite a bit, and um, Asgard's Wrath obviously is already getting rave rewards. Uh, I've got a, a very good video where I do multiplayer Stormland with Tyrael Wood, and he convinced me into it, so totally kudos to Tyrael. He talked me into it, and I was like, it was like, that's not a good idea, I'm going to play the other stuff. He's like, but there's nothing here. We don't get to play Medal of Honor, we don't get to play... Like, so the Oculus screwed up, and they apologized um, offline. But we really got shunted a little bit in not being able to play a lot of the stuff, like the hand tracking stuff, the um, Oculus Link. We had dedicated booths, but like they were like properly set up. Like we couldn't do Asgard's Wrath, we couldn't do Stormland, or we could do Stormland, but we couldn't do um, Medal of Honor, which is like the thing that everyone wanted to queue for. And the queues were like four hours long. So <clears throat> unless you literally sprinted there right after the keynote, either one, uh, that was it. And it was only open for uh, five and a half or six hours. So it's like really ridiculous. <clears throat> right, it's on Quest, but if you already owned it from the go, it didn't port over for free. I asked Oculus and they said the devs just didn't make it available that way. Okay, yeah, so Dar, that's a, um, it's a dev choice, right? It doesn't always, yeah. I see what you mean now. Um, 
Let me say this. I know they are very different games, but from what you've seen so far, which do you prefer? I tend to love social multiplayer. I haven't played Asgard's Wrath on my own machine. Um, I'm more excited for Stormland only because I want to play with a buddy. I want to have a laugh, right? And Asgard's Wrath is it's just me on my shoulders, like if I was playing Skyrim. So for the entertainment value for audience and for me, Stormland at the moment. It seems very well put together, ripping your arms off, upgrading your arms. It feels very kind of like Borderlands-y, and I really like it. Like, check check, check the video on Stormland that I've got. Um, you'll see why. I got really excited about that. And actually, I didn't post my Asgard's Wrath footage because when I got into it, um, rather it was, I was very confused. It was not the same as what I'd played before. And I was like, wow, I'm getting stuck on, on puzzles. And I generally in games don't really have a lot of fun when I get stuck on puzzles. And I've heard people do get stuck on puzzles. There's a lot of great battles and epic stuff like that. But uh, again, I haven't played the game properly. So my, my remarks are only based on demos that I've played it on show floors since PAX East. Um, right, right, right. For the Halo design by far, let's see. What's your favorite mounting system for HMDs? Trying out Mike's Rift S mod, but the deluxe strap is going back. Really find the Halo headband way better besides the audio. Yeah, I mean, the I like the Halo headband, to be honest. Um, it works for me. Flattens your hair in a funny way. That, that's the only part I don't like about Halos. Um, but in general, the Rift S is my go-to daily driver and has been, will continue to be. Um, one part because of obviously the touch controllers are great, They're super easy for streaming because I just won't pick them up, drop them off. Uh, as you'll notice, I don't use the safety straps on these either um, for convenience, and I've never thrown them, so it's like I'm, it's just a risk reward thing. And then the Rift S itself is like quite comfortable. And now they've actually got the new. Um, let me see if I've got it here. Uh, I won't pull it out right now. They've got the new um, uh, VR cover for the Rift S, and it's great fits perfectly and works great. It's the denim cover for like $20. Great. They give you two of them. So you can wash one or whatever. I don't think you would on this build though. A little complicated to get it on. So I think you just basically leave it on until it's really manky and then probably go to the next one. You know, like that. Or give another one to a friend. Which is great. Uh, it's kind of what I'm planning to do on mine. I'm like, do I, do I give it away? Or I don't know what to do. So. I wonder how, with the link, how is the quest really going to handle those new Rift S games that require a shit ton of space? Um, so the Quest doesn't install them. They stay installed on the PC. So the PC and Oculus Home will download and install and run the game. The link is only compressing and sending a stream of the game to the headset. So it be, turns it into a streaming device. It's actually not doing any processing aside from image processing to uncompress the image and show it to you. Uh, it's meant to be very low latency from the people I know who've played it. Very convincing. Uh, but for me, I got a virtual desktop. I can do that, no problem. And I can do that with the entire Steam library. I do not need, need the Oculus uh, link. Expensive cable, running to my PC, another cable for my headset. I like wireless, thank you very much. So, you know, I'll stay tetherless. But uh, these two games obviously were announced, uh, and their dates, October 10th, November 14th. And um, so obviously we've had the Asgard's Wrath release already. <laughs> Stormland, look forward to it, baby. It is coming at us. Fucking awesome. And I, I do have, if anyone's like, wow, Asgard's Wrath is really expensive. Uh, I have a spare key for Asgard's Wrath, and I'm planning to do a key quiz for it on Reddit. So my key quiz is, you can go look up Zim key quiz on Reddit to see an example of the past, but it's essentially a series of VR related or gaming related um, quiz questions with like fill in the blank. So the, the whole key, you have to get all the bits right and then try to redeem the key. And if it redeems, you obviously got all the answers right. So, and then it's a race and it usually takes three to four hours for someone on Reddit or the internet to crack it, register it and get the key. And so I figured what's the best way to do it? Just give it back. I always love giving stuff back. I don't like baiting people. I don't believe in that. I know pretty much everybody, you know, 
does that kind of thing, I don't like doing it. And because our key system doesn't work anymore and our point system doesn't work anymore, I'm just gonna give it away. So uh, if you wanna participate in that, watch my Twitter. Yeah. Most of you already do, otherwise you wouldn't be here. All right, so we know what that headset is. Why did I take that photo? Ah, Medal of Honor. This is awesome. This is really good. Uh, why link if virtual desktop does the trick? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, I don't know. Like memory for saves and stuff? No, I don't think so. Uh, still not, Dar. Yeah, it'll all be on the PC. Yeah. Um, Medal of Honor looked really quite fun, but I didn't get to play it. And I was a big Medal of Honor fan with the original, so I was a little bit sad not to be able to get to play Medal of Honor. As I said, it was just a fluff up by Oculus, and like this is coming 2020 anyway. I would have liked to have tried it, but um, it's all right. Hey, Brash showed up on stage as well. Hi, I'm Michael Abrash. I invent lots of cool things. Bow before me. <laughs> and he does. I've got loads of respect for him. I'm just, it's late at night and I'm going insane. Um, look at this. This is like one of the prototypes, Half Dome 2. Look at this thing. Well, don't show me pictures of sexy headsets that I can't have yet. Like, just don't, please. <laughs> please don't show me this stuff. He even showed like a modular headset. It was insane. Look, look at how, he showed like all these bits. Look at how complicated it is. Snapping together, it was amazing. See you, Aaron, appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. And um, we'll catch you a bit later. Best part about VODs and stuff like that. Streams go straight into VOD. Uh, I also got to play Death Race. Uh, which is a new game coming to the quest. Uh, it had some, it had some challenges. It was kind of fun. I gave them feedback. Um, they were a fun dev team. I really liked meeting them. It was really nice. Um, I don't know that I would straight up buy the game, but the thing I loved about it is it was totally tongue in cheek. Um, it was like it was like totally tongue in cheek. Like there was this, these like bad voice acting like stuff in the game. If you like that, like Red, like uh, Red Alert 2, uh, when they had like the, the like really B-grade actors in that, and if you found that super funny, Death Race is gonna be your, your thing, because it's very much like that. The mechanics of the game, I was hoping it would play a bit better. Um, it was an early build, it's quest, it's limited, so maybe it'll improve. This was the steps that I think Loads of people took pictures of, uh, the time is now, and this is exactly what they had in their t-shirt, uh, the same shirt that I have as well, so uh, I'll show you that in a minute, but um, yeah, I, I thought it was, again, a bit cringeworthy, this whole kind of branding. Most years they do a pretty good job, it's quite artsy-fartsy. Uh, this year it was a bit cringeworthy, very kind of American. And then another thing I got to try out, which most people I think didn't or skipped or whatever, um, was enterprise experiences. So these are things that, examples of companies who have created applications for the Quest. I tried two of them. I tried uh, the LM Wind Power demo. I was interested in wind power because I used to do wind power generation in Ireland uh, when I was planning to do power engineering as my career. Um, and I used to be responsible for, for, for the, uh, some of the wind power elements uh, of Ireland's wind power generation. So it was kind of interesting to see that and they were showing about how they coat the blades before a turbine gets mounted. I mean, the blades on a turbine are absolutely massive. Um, cue happy hardcore music. <laughs> yeah, wonk, yeah. Um, the coolest thing I played here was I played the DHL container loader, which gives me so much respect for people who deal with Amazon parcels because um, it was basically stack efficiently boxes of all these different shapes into a truck on the clock. And it rated you based on how your stacking was. Like, and you scored. It was like, I'd love to have done it on stream because I think it's really funny. But it was fun to play something that wasn't just a sheer game. It was like, these are enterprise applications. Uh, and they actually had dedicated space for it. And I, I noticed that Oculus Connect is turning more from gaming to business. And we've actually heard from Oculus as well that in future years it might be less of a gaming show and more so of a business-centered show because 
It's a lot of business types who go there, and that, that's kind of really the point of the event from the beginning. Um, here you go. There's an example. I mean, the, the show floor was pretty empty. Uh, Tetris Enterprise Edition. Well, there wasn't Tetris on there, was there? No. <laughs> oh, right, because of the stacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it now. Um, yeah, pretty much that. Pretty much that. But it, you could put boxes in all orientations. You know, you had full free range of motion. So you really had to be careful. Um, but they just had the weirdest layout. Um, so this was like the kind of queue system that they had for the link and for the room. And the room is one of those quest games. But it, like, yeah. They were super long demos. Oh, this is Webhead. And uh, that's Mo Moik as, the, as well, the squid. Uh, so he's cool. He runs this massive... VR Discord. I got to meet him for the first time. Lovely meeting you, Webby. Um, what else can I say? Oh, yeah. I told you my 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 neck and stuff was not good, so I even had to lie down uh, during this, which was kind of sad. But I was like, I I can't take vertical pressure on my spine anymore. I had to lie down, which sucks. Um, as you guys know, I've been going through physio and. Um, I'm just about out of the woods now with this thing. And we're going to have to go slow. We're going to have to try and... I can't do, like, I think a three-hour stream on Tuesday. It'll have to be, like, maybe do an hour and then see how I feel afterwards. So that's the way it is. Anything on cyber twinning? Tell me what that is, Walk. I don't know what that is. Um, this was the Enreal. I got to try this out. So this is an augmented reality um, pair of glasses as well. Uh, neck braces don't help that ninth, but I appreciate the sentiment. So I got to try these out. Um, let me go ahead and show you. I've got actually a video of this. So here's me trying the Unreal. Quite an unconvincing AR headset, I would say. But you can do things like, in a very, very lightweight framework, a uh, very lightweight package, which is tethered down to a mobile you'd have in your pocket. So it's not just the glasses. It's a phone cord headset that's pretty light. The headset's very light. Um, and then you have a little controller that you can do like tilt brush equivalent stuff in a room. And the cool thing is that you load it up and someone else has drawn a sign. You can walk to it. You can walk around it. You know, it's like tilt brush that way. So that was that was neat. That was neat. But uh, useful for anything that I, I could tell? Not really. Not even art. It wasn't accurate enough. This is the kind of image that we got. So I think that was someone's face that someone had drawn. Like, it's really not that good. And this is kind of what it looks like through the lenses. So there's a very, you know, there's a hard cutoff at a certain spot. And then you can see stuff. And it's like, pretty math. Keeps peeps away from the dangerous arms or hazardous environments. This is what it looks like. So kind of a plasticky nose bridge. And then you add different lenses that would clip in. There's the lens array that you get. You get a tray of lenses with when you buy the headset, which to me seems like crazy wasteful. <laughs> You're gonna use like two of those lenses. This is where I did my ultra professional panel. As I said, the theater was quite small. Uh, here's Richard. And I wanted to show people what it looks like from the outside. It's very kind of reflective. So, I mean, you can kind of see what the person is seeing but I needed a, a face model, so that worked. As I said, uh, th these aren't really that interesting. Yeah, but if you were like really keen, you can see where it's getting cut off. Like in a car factory, the arms that need humans to control it, it's done with VR instead of, yeah, 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 fair point. Uh, that's a controller, uh, which was weird. This, was, this is how you get to know when you're at Oculus Connect to go pick up your free t-shirt. Okay, it's like, hey, get your t-shirt. And um, I'll show you mine here, just real quick. We haven't jumped back to the scene in quite some time. Nope, oh, hang on. Let me uh, stop that from doing that. I don't usually put a filter on this scene. And this shirt looks like, it's a Patagonia shirt. I'll take this off. We can just show you exactly what it all looks like. <laughs> You've seen this on other people, no doubt. Loads of people went to connect. So this is... It's a Patagonia shirt. It's actually got... Where is it? It's got the Patagonia label there. Um, feels nice. It's, it's a base layer. 
The text is raised a little bit. Uh, so other than that, it's just a base layer, black, Oculus Connect 6. Very lightweight, very lightweight. Um, but I actually, I, I like this. It's a very useful layer. Because uh, last year they gave us a, um, not all the Connect attendees, but we, we got, the creators got from Oculus a, uh, uh, a sweater. And so the sweater actually worked pretty well. Um, but that's nice. That's nice. Um, it's always good to just like, because for people who are going to be considering, like, if I go to Oculus Connect, like, what am I going for? Um, obviously not going for the shirt or the water bottle, but it's nice to get, you know. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a nice touch. So uh, with that said, that was our Oculus Connect shirt. Let's keep going. I promise you there's not too much more. Right. This was me walking out of the show floor. You can see that pillar with the time is now. So this is the kind of visuals that we had. And this is like, if you queue up, that's the kind of contention you have. Like there wasn't that much in terms of seat filling at that point, which is good. There you go. There's another example of what it looks like. Good old Oculus Connect. But I love the colors and stuff. It's like they really put a lot of effort into it. Now you should when all your participants are paying 400 quid. Everyone doing the obligatory photos. I'm like, dude, you're just like literally in my shot. <laughs> I gave up. That's funny. Um, what's this then? It's the same one. Is that the same one again? No. Why did I take that? That's weird. Oh. Oh. What if? Can you hear this? What if we could get? What if we could? Get... If I could figure this out, just a little more realistic. Yeah, okay. It's 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 more it's 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 work. If we combine VR and immersive theater, what if, what if time slice the boat simulation? If we could just shave one millisecond, if, if, just, just, if I could visualize the details so See that? Rowdy's in there. That's Rowdy, right? I think that's Rowdy. Yeah, that was that was Rowdy from something he did. Um, but this is like the intro, and like I got the whole thing. Uh, when I was still in college, I was kind of action. Right. I want to show you one of the reactions. This is it. So even more importantly, though, is that retention is, is good, right? So people are using it week after week after week, which is a great See, uh, signal for how the content ecosystem is getting stronger and VR is becoming something when, and going forward. So the, the, the goal is that if if, uh, if you develop something for Quest today, hang on, where is it? He says it. He does he does this big unveiling, and actually people are really happy. So the first thing that, that we want to announce here today, we go. Is, um, is we've been looking at how we can make this possible. Um, so we're, we've made a major software update uh, and a new product that we're calling Oculus Link that is going to make it so that if you have a gaming PC oh, and a USB <laughs> you're now going to be able to run all the Rift content on your Quest. Yes! Oh, yeah! So that's so that's just a sample, right? So I mean, I've I've actually got this whole video and it's it's quite long. Um, there's various segments where people get super excited at different announcements, and it's nice, you know, it's nice because like I was very excited. You could hear me in the video as well, um, but then it kind of like after a while, you're like, 
hang on a second. You know, should I be that excited? And, and that's really what day two was all about. Like, like thinking that way. Certainly felt that way. Um, let's see, was there anything else in this that I wanted to show you? Probably not. No, I don't. I mean, there's the... That's the pass-through plus. Next. <gasps> This, this, I think they show you. Pass through plus gives you a comfortable, stereo correct view of your surroundings while you're wearing the headset. And it's useful for any time you step outside your play space. To make this possible on Quest, we've applied techniques from high performance image processing and advanced 3D computation. Yeah, okay. So, anyway, like, you guys can watch that stuff separately, yeah? Crowd going wild, eh? Watching in VR is really nice. Um, did you watch in VR, Commander? Um, cause I, I, you know, that would have been fun, but I did not. Oh, this is the whole journey continues, IXLM Labs. Like if you, if you don't know this already. I need to play that. But, um, anyway, we'll skip that. This was the fun part. So for those who don't know and haven't seen it, I'm just going to run a little bit. To like a lot of detail here and again this is this is all something that's you know uh, they've talked about it and they go into lots of oh there was that lovely grenade throw Made in midair and throwing it back those are all things that you end thing. up doing yourself you know so it was it was a really good unveiling and i really wanted to play it didn't get a chance to though oh my god what was that it's a very surreal experience to be yeah anyway so grenade pulling yeah yeah it was loads of fun Gotta love it. Um, <clears throat> okay, this was from the panel. So this was the, this was one of the guys I spoke alongside. There's Poonanners in the pink with the crazy hair. He's got like really nutty hair, this guy. Super nice though. Um, there's Viper, by the way. That's, uh, that's Lonely Viper. And don't remember that guy's name. And anyone else do I recognize? Not obviously. Hippie. Hippie girl. <laughs> They gave us like egg rolls. There was fucking a box of egg rolls and wine. It was like <laughs> great, such an art thing. Uh, this is the kind of panel that uh, I was on, which was which was kind of nice. It was just like sit up on stage and do a panel. I don't think I did a particularly good job, um, <clears throat> but it's nice to get it out of the way, you know. Uh, All right, it's time for yet another quick run, and this time we're from. I can't see it. Good. There was this giant cube hanging in there, and um, it was not all that interesting. I think this is a, something I ditched. I just I was like, oh, I don't feel like giving people an update right now. But the floor was like really empty. There were not many booths or whatever. Like they they really didn't. Look at that. There's almost like there's like nothing. There's the, there was like four little areas, one bit that was all business. It was, wasn't even like the previous Connect. It was uh, it was definitely underwhelming. Uh, I'm going to skip by a bunch of this stuff. There's Vivian. She's so nice. She does so much for the community, like so much effort. Really, really. Uh, here it is. There you go. That's what the Unreal looks like as you're moving. It's kind of weird, though. Like watching someone else, but you can see how see how much it's like. It's not too far off what the Hololens can do, which is very postage stamp. It's like it's like an expanded postage stamp. So it is what it is. The form factor is probably its main benefit. It's quite light. There's Facebook Spaces uh, or Facebook Horizon. Sorry. <clears throat> There's obviously uh, you know getting ready. That's that's what the San McHenry um, Convention Center looks like. San Jose McHenry Convention Center. And it's nice, you know, in the morning to get get there. And very good convention center, actually. I like it. Here's, um, you know, early on breakfast with uh, some of my friends. So Cass and Cherry and Tyrael Wood. As I said, T and I, we played. Um, I recently did a, 
I went over to um, <clears throat> Kaz and Cherry's place. They've got a lovely, uh, lovely apartment, actually. Um, here's Alexander. Uh, Meja. Zip. And he's having, they have a nice breakfast there, actually. Oh, there's Eric Hartley. And who's this on the bottom left? Can you see? That is Voodoo DE. So, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just surrounded by other creators, of course, in these things. There's Rowdy. Hello, Rowdy. Get off my stream. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, this is Anthony uh, from VR365. Um, we got a chance to meet for the first time. We actually look quite like one another. This is funny. He's probably got a few years on me, but um, it's funny that way. This is something that I didn't like. Now, I usually like what Oculus do and the whole Californian thing, but let's just read this for a second, all right? <clears throat> this is like, you know, it's time to respect ethnicity, language, gender identity, sexual orientation, ability, background, personal space, opinion, body, safety, comfort level, skill level, everyone. It just feels a little bit too like, uh, I don't know, Big Brother or something. It's just like, yeah, I get it, right? And everyone should be open and support these things. And maybe it's nice to post a reminder, but it just feels a little bit like, I don't know, threatening or something. I mean, these these events have never really been that, that bad. Recently, there's been some bad press, though, about, um, I think, you know, free alcohol at these events, then leading to um, women getting chatted up when they didn't want to. Here's the old church of John Carmack. This isn't my photo. Um, I just thought I'd show it because it's an important part. I try to stay away from John now because people are like, oh, the first time it's John, and everyone has to get the time in with John, which is um, kind of funny. He tried out this thing. I don't remember what this was. It was some kind of like repair. Oh, it was like an AR thingamajiggy. Uh, John's amazing though as a dude. He's freaking awesome. This is one of my favorite photos from the event. This was funny This was after I got a chance to play pixel rip uh, 1995 which is Absolutely fantastic meets the expectations of the first one and maybe even extends on it a little because it's higher fidelity uh, And this is the kind of photo you get when you uh, go to Vegas, I guess uh, Lee Deb, she's she's really funny. I don't know how she walks around with all this kid on her It's gonna hurt her after a while I'd imagine uh, so we got all that stuff. There you go. There, there's um, there's our lead support. Uh, that's Nathie's uh, manager and brother, David. And uh, he's a furry guy with a furry mic. Uh, he helped us shoot the F Reality podcast that we did from the balcony there, uh, overlooking. Now, this is time for me to show some love for my friend, the Lonely Viper. He and I, two Irish fellas. Well, I'm half Irish and he's full. Um, but we do share that in common. We're both in also financial services as our main job and uh, wear, wear suits of, of colored armor when we're not at work. And um, I saw this and I just thought, you know, <laughs> I could enhance this photo. So please um, cover your children's eyes with this next one. I apologize. This is, this is so, so beyond, beyond me. Uh, uh, so I, I started with it like this. It's like a photo album. Except for the, it says it's time to eat dicks. <laughs> and I'm so sorry if I, you love this by the way. Uh, but I saw him and I was like, I had the opportunity. I'm taking the picture. It looks like he's, you know, having a bit of a sandwich there in VR. Um, right, what was this? This is just, I think the shine of Oculus Connect 6. Just a little bit of B-roll there in case I wanted to use it. Here's me in the breakfast. Um, That was it. <clears throat> What's this? I don't even know what this is. Oh, that's my other vlog thing. So again, that's something separate. We're almost there now. This is awesome. This was the room that Evora were showing Pixel Ripped in. And I was like, shit, you've got the highway, you've got the mountains, you've got palm trees. This is the most amazing place. Look at this. This is their hotel room window. I was like, shit, look at that. It's like some sweet, you know? And then I'm like looking at some of their gadgetry. Again, this is like basically B-roll stuff that you take if you really care about that stuff. But look at their setup. It's like really classy, right? They were showing off this. There's another game called um, Yuki, 
which um, most people haven't heard of, and is awesome, really cool. It's like a three, a space uh, shooter. It was the first one that I really like, where you got objects coming at you, you got to duck between stuff and keep shooting stuff like old Galaga style. So look out for Yuki from the same guys. And it's totally playable, totally ready. Um, I told him I'm like, God, you, you guys are gonna like this. So this was uh, this was my run of Pixel Ripped. Yeah. So we did that, and then I am playing, blah, blah, blah. And then my phone runs out of space. It was the most disappointing thing ever. Like, my phone literally ran out of recording space, and I did a, like, 25-minute recording, and I didn't get more than, like, three minutes. I posted it, but uh, it was like, no, you know? Now, this is proper funny. I think, is this what I'm thinking it is? Oh, this is the game I was talking about. This is Yuki. Oh, he shows it for like half a second. Don't look at me. <laughs> no! Oh, you can't really see it. It's it's really cool. Uh, just take my word for it for now. You'll see some better footage of it some, somewhere else, but I don't have better footage. This is ridiculous. That's amazing. Come on, Amy. <laughs> Well. So they snuck Nate the into the hotel room while I was in VR with like headphones on and I had no idea and I was like, fuck it hell, what the hell? <laughs> it's like, you can see my face, it's absolutely priceless. It's like, I, I just like straight away I'm just like into like, who the, what the, how the fuck are you here? That's amazing. Come on, Amy. <laughs> I was totally dead. What was this the uh, So that was fun. <clears throat> oh, and this is where uh, Karen was, off on her trips with our son Denver. Um, off in the mountains and stuff like that here. She was looking at the highlands, so I, I missed that. But, uh, you know, everything else was there. Here's the F-Reality lads. You know, if you don't know us, um, F-Reality podcast. We do that weekly on a Saturday. Uh, so on the left, you got Nathy. You got Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis or VR Oasis. Rowdy guy. And, of course, myself. Uh, they're really awesome. Look at how slim... Rowdy guy is. He's like a freaking stick column. I mean, I'm skinny, but he is like, he's like the thinnest skeleton I think I've ever met. Um, even Mike looks broad compared to Rowdy, uh, which is crazy. And he's now a full doctor. He's a neuroscientist. So <coughs> you got like entrepreneur, <laughs> biz, uh, entrepreneur, ex-cop, scientist, banger, right? <coughs> Funny. There's us again posing. Usual thing. We try to get a few of these shots in because we're never together. So it's like, let's just do a bunch of things. Here's another one. Yeah. I won't believe her on these things. Uh, someone said that we were, you know, it was like that this was sponsored by Coca-Cola or something. Anyway, funny dudes. Uh, that's us sitting on the step ready for the big old shot. And then we did this massive shot, which you'll see in a minute. Oh, this was me playing... Um, as I said, these are a little bit scrambled. I don't know why. The videos are kind of out. If Rowdy has kids, he'll add some weight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think he wants kids. Does he want kids? I need to ask him again. This is me with the guys behind Pistol Whip. Uh, and I'm playing Pistol Whip. And it's just... It's awesome. I mean, I'm not exactly sexy looking while I'm doing this. But I was like, you just like, you feel so into it. You feel like totally John Wick. You're just like, blam, 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 blam. Take it, take an E, blam, blam, blam. It's freaking awesome. You have to take my word for it. It is the next Beat Saber. It's freaking good. can't see it now this game was insane i played this against viper and then rowdy played against viper and you just go to town it was this game that was like um it's a steam game where you're it's like an indie steam game i can't remember the name of it now but um anyway let's look at the video it's really involved and you end up like going crazy at each other 
And the, the worst part about it was he had the, like, the spaces overlapping, so these guys were actually hitting each other at times. Like, full force in that! It's absolutely nuts. I love that Viper goes in this whole suit. Look at this, look at how close they're going. Pistol Whip is coming out uh, November... F oh, November 7th. November 7th. So, a week um, before Stormland. Yeah. So definitely one to look out for. But this was just, it was just awesome. Like, this is the kind of stuff you'd get at the Indie Developer Lounge. I also played, like, with a whole military weapon. It's so funny. I was like, you're going to lose a headset because Rowdy's going to get smacked in the face. Uh, this was breakfast uh, just on the last day there. Uh, so we are just hanging out, obviously, before, uh, before going. The thing is, once you get, like, in with a group of VR friends, it's, like, so nice to have, like, the family dinner. Again and again and again, and it's like that's that's really cool. That's a cool bunch. Um, right. Oh, there's Voodoo. He almost hit me with his car. <laughs> Not really. Uh, he's the biggest German VR YouTuber, and it was nice to catch another catch them. Thomas, he's he's such a nice dude. Um, this was my last uh, vlog thing, and I was just like sitting there and talking away, and I'm like. I was like, man, it's going to be a hard road ahead for me, and these things are ahead of me, and I just wanted to be true with people about you know, what was what was to come, as I was. Um, this I couldn't believe. This cable, if you have ever seen this cable, it is the most puny cable I think I've ever seen, and this is in the airport is what they were charging for it. 23 quid for literally, like, an inch and a half, maybe two inches of wire. <laughs> You buy this in an Apple store for eight or nine dollars. They were charging like nearly triple that, which, which is just insane. It, Apple already are extortionate. This is crazy. And it's like they just have two of them. Like they've got fucking rack of the stuff, you know? <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, this is the problem, right? So, when I got to San Jose, and I was ready to fly home, and I had my tickets, then there was a Chicago thunderstorm. Look at this! And they canceled, or had massive delays on all flights going in. So all of my outbound travel, so at this point, I am the worst off in my physical condition as possible. I'm in the airport, I've got all my stuff with me, I'm just ready to get on the plane. Just load my body on the plane and get me home, right? And I have to wait another, like, I was in the airport for, I think it was 11 hours. Between the first plane that didn't want to take off, I had to rebook all my travel. They were really good in San Jose Airport. They sorted me out. I didn't have to pay for anything. But they had to rebook all my travel. And then I had to wait until, like, 8 p.m. that night in the airport, like, just bouncing between things, eating stuff, making sure I'm not falling asleep, feeling horrible, lying on the ground when I had to, um, eating some food, whatever I could do to pass the time. Then I met up with um, Simon uh, and John and Chiago, and we all got on a plane back to the UK. So I was like, oh, I can thank God. By the time I got back to the UK, I slept for 18 hours straight without waking up, which I've never done in my life. This is where we were finally ready to board the plane. That look of elation on my face is, oh my God, thank God I can finally get on a plane for 11 hours. It was the most uncomfortable I've ever been on a plane. Uh, I was really hurting, couldn't lie down. Uh, really couldn't get comfortable the whole flight and it was just one of those places where you're like you remember like in Fight Club where um, <clears throat> the secondary character not Brad Pitt the other guy and he's like trying to go go off to his like cold place where he's getting the lie poured on his hand and his, he's talking to a spirit animal or whatever and Brad Pitt like slaps him and he's like you gotta stay with me you gotta feel the pain I was definitely doing that I was like I need to just space out and just like put my mind somewhere else I, I had my VR headset stuff with me. I couldn't even do that or watch the video. I just was like so uncomfortable. It, it, it gave me so much pleasure to be done with that flight once I got off of it. Look at me. I am not a happy camper here. I didn't know I had that shot in here. Um, and this is what it looks like when you're crossing over the UK. That's what this was. This was flying. Uh, I think this was flying to land in London. Um, it looked quite nice, so I just was like, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to take a video, sorry. Um, and I like taking those because it just gives people a, a, a feeling for what it looks like. Oh, there, there's me on the panel. This girl next to me who was like, she was very out there. 
um, Brad I just met, Vivian, and then the, the host of the panel. And there's me rapping. <laughs> me with Vivian. Yep. Um, what is this? This is one of the uh, things. This is one of the things that the uh, SciTech team did. They went and played this VR Terminator Salvation Experience, which is another one of those things you can do. And again, here's another video of us just like coming in. Turn that down. And uh, that's us. What coming into Edinburgh? I think at that stage. Um, or is that London? That looks like that looks like Edinburgh to me. Um, but again, if you don't know what these places look like, it's kind of nice to see someone else's video. For someone who does, it's like the most main mundane thing. Um, oh yeah, this is this is us coming into Edinburgh. You can see the bridge and all that. I won't want to do the whole thing. It's fine. Just skip through it. Yeah, it's grand. Big old wings. I was so happy to be getting home. I mean, it was like I was so. So better than 11 days, yeah, very true, very true. No, never fly through Chicago, I've learned. Chicago's apparently the worst airport in the world. <laughs> That's a lot of seasoned travelers like, don't do it. I didn't book my own travel though, Jamie. That was the problem, or Jaime. Are you Jamie or Jaime? And this is me when I was like, oh, I am so done with this trip, fuck this. <laughs> That's that on my face. I was so done. Um, and then I got a chance, finally, I think it was, this is when I was in London. I was watching the podcast, and I'm see. I guess this is pretty well. Um, there's Poon Anders, Eric, Ninjo, Alex, Steve, PD, you know. Anyway, um, this is an example. And then this was the shot that they took with all of us, right? Like you can see, I'm there. Bad day to wear blue, yeah? Um, <coughs> next to Rowdy. <coughs> they took this picture. Uh, they took one last year as well. It's like more and more people. Favorite part has to be, of course, the Viper in the background with the raised middle finger. Yeah. Classic Viper. Classic Viper. Good on you, dude. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Uh, right. These I had, and I brought a set back. If you are in the States, get these. Pistachio nut clusters. They're about $7 for a bag. They're feckin' worth it. <laughs> they are so good. And resealable for freshness, thank God. Oh, there you go. There's the proper picture. Uh, it's not that bad, Steve, but yeah, LGB or Burbank if you can afford it. Um, hey, I'm in that one. Oh, are you, Steve? Did I not meet you? Did we meet? I don't remember. I'm, I'm a... Wait, is that you? Are you the... That's you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I was thinking of another Steve I know. Yeah, that's fine. That works. But this is a nice photo. It's got everybody in it. Like, like, nice. But it doesn't that feel good to be part of that family, eh? You know? Nice. There's those dudes. I love it. Maybe Mike are probably talking about something there. Um, that was good. So, uh, yeah. I just, I do this, like, little silly photo album edit thing on it, and it works well. Still, I, I mean, look at my first brilliant. Like, it looks like he was photoshopped in. You could literally Photoshop that now into so many different scenes, you know, and it'd be perfect. Uh, I might do that. But and then, so when I got, got home, what did I do? I relied on lying down streams in the quest and the go. So I'd be in another room and I'd play a 2D game and I'd be, I was, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna fucking still do VR. And then I got smart and I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe I just need to focus on physio and sort my body. He says, was that right before the kick viper out? No, that was actually. Um, oh, maybe. Yeah. His full suit was a problem, for sure. Uh, no, this, that was the second day. That was the second day. So, he wore his suit, but he didn't wear his mask. Except for that. And then he didn't wear his katanas. And that was what did it in the first day. So, no, actually, he was kicked out uh, before. Here are the, you know, Oculus Connect bottles. So, there's OC, uh, OC4. OC5. So, they went from glass to metal, to plastic. <laughs> Next year they said we're gonna have a, uh, a paper, <laughs> paper one. Um, yep, that shot's coming up again. I can't, I can't wait to tell you all what this is that I'm playing, by the way. This is like the number one thing for my California trip. And uh, you're all gonna have fun playing it, I think. If you're like me at all, and like the kind of games I like, you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, there is me. 
playing Pixel Ripped. Again, that game is amazing. Definitely check that out. Um, great dev team, very supportive, very glad for the demo. And this was the this was the kind of conclusion shot, I think, that we wanted to take. Someone said to me that this looks like they mapped the original Tuscany level and that, <laughs> that this was real life Tuscany. And to be honest, it looks just like that. It's so funny. So um, that was the jacuzzi winery that we had visited as well. So there you go. Um, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> oh God, not that again. Oh, oh look, I can just tab back and forth. This is like exactly what you always wanted, isn't it? To finish off the Zim show. Just pumping for your, <laughs> for your benefit. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing that. How long before we get to talk about it? About a week. I think it's, um, let's see, it's currently, what day is it? 19th? 21st, oh shit. <laughs> I've, I've lost a couple days. Um, so, a few days. I think they're announcing it on the 24th. Yeah, a couple of days. So stay tuned. Uh, as soon as I can talk, I will. And I will talk loudly. It will probably be on Tuesday, actually. Mm, uh, Thursday show. I would be able to talk about it. Uh, Pistol Whip. Absolutely look forward to that one. What else do I have in here? I think, uh, I think we're almost done. If I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. I wanted to do the lads. Yeah, I was like, this is the final thing. Like, it's just a really big piece. I mean, I sacrificed a lot to do the podcast with these guys in person. They all did as well for us to do this stuff together. Um, and I just want to say that like on the back spine of Oculus Connect, like the F reality thing that we've built together is really important. Yeah. And uh, love it. I think it's really cool. Really cool. You've seen that already. That's the Pistol Web video. Um, I think that's it. Oh, right, this one. I forgot about this one. That's me with, <laughs> that's just crazy. That helmet is not comfortable. That is not a comfortable helmet. Uh, oh, here's this. This is one of the. Um, this is one of the creator pictures that we took while we were there, and I thought this was quite nice as well. Alex is in there, and uh, it's like all these VR creators. Yeah. Um, the guy in the middle is the new, the new, the new fella. I don't actually know the ginger-haired dude. Uh, I think he was. I thought he was an esports guy, but could be wrong. Um, this is funny because I had done like a silly pose. And they're like, silly poses. And I was like, you fecker. And that's the face. I was like, I just did a silly pose. How dare you? And then they snapped it. I always seem out of place. The last one, everyone did the can-can but me. Like, I, I did the leg first. Like, it was out of sync. And then everyone else did it. They took a picture. So it looks like I'm the only one refusing to do the can-can. Uh, 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 what can I do? What can I do, eh? Uh, there's no justice in photography. See? This is, this is the earlier one. This was the serious photo. And I'm like, okay, let's pull a funny face. Yeah? And then they did the, the funny face after this. So that was good. That was good fun. Loads of, loads of good time. That was me. Okay, so this is this is probably to wind it up for the, the end. That was like probably the best photo of me from the place. I look quite athletic there. And uh, Alex, he always looks good because he's a buff dude and uh, knows what he's talking about. Although he's got his, um, his, uh, his uh, what do you call it? Six o'clock shadow showing here. Uh, I don't have to deal with that. I actually don't get growth on the sides of my face, which is great. So I just get a nice, clean goatee. That's Chris with the red hair oh, from VR Roundtable. Oh, he's from VR Roundtable. If only someone had introduced him. Uh, I, I didn't get the time to say hi. So um, I think that's it. I think. Is that it? Is that it? Might be the last one. Oh, that's me in the... So these are the creator booths. So this is where we were recording. Yeah. So you can see... I mean, there's like two booths. Not really sound isolated. Uh, I was there. I The thing I would recommend to people, if you're going to go, bring your own quality headset. They're, they wouldn't necessarily have one uh, if you're going to be recording and stuff. So then you don't have any uh, sound leakage off of the headset. Uh, see, like I had my, my lav recording me was right on my lapel. Um, and, and that's something that I, a trick that I would recommend other people do. So, um, come on, that's got to be the end. People need to go to bed. <laughs> That was a face someone snapped at me. Oh, these are just things. Oh, I forgot this bit. This is really neat. Okay, this is gonna end the stream. I, okay, this is the health part. I ended up in A&E, which is accident and emergency, the same as the emergency ward, um, because 
while I was doing physio, my physio said, hey, why don't we do some acupuncture? And I said, that's fine. I had acupuncture before. I have no problem with it. And he stuck a needle in my foot, needle in my hand, a needle in my neck. And I felt really unwell and I passed out and I had a small seizure. And then he was like, dude, you had a small seizure. You need to go to the a &E. And I was like, okay, I will do that. And so my wife came and picked me up. I went to a &E. We waited for like two hours there. And then I got seen to. But this photo that Karen snapped is really cool because it shows my footprint. Like every toe is shown in the, in the sole of my foot. We thought that was really cool. A nice like highlight. Just noticed this. It's way too late. Yeah, Paul, we're just about to finish, I think. Uh, you're going to see some stuff you probably already saw. But this is the part that I just wanted to show, share with you. What have I gone through? Um, so all that stuff happened. The physio stuff happened. I was in lots of discomfort. Working back from all of that problem in my neck. The problem is between the C5 and C6 vertebrae in my neck, uh, there is there are bone spurs. And so the cable that's running through my neck, like literally you know, your spinal cord, and then you get the nerve cable coming out that lets you control your hand, your hand and all that stuff is rubbing up against sawtooth and so it gets irritated and inflamed and then it gets trapped within the the opening hole of the uh, vertebrae and then it causes me all kinds of pain on the side pain in my arm pain tingling loss of power all that kind of stuff very bad and it's exacerbated by weight on top of my spinal column um so having a headset on is not a good idea at that point blah 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 right that's the problem and then amidst all of that I pass out and all this kind of stuff. Now, I used to have a problem when I was in my 20s of fainting uh, based on, like, I'd get an injection, faint. Uh, I'd be really stressed out or something, faint. Like, it was like one of those goats that you scare and they go, blah, and then die. Um, and let me see. Yeah, so this is what ended up happening. <laughs> I ended up, <laughs> look, more nipples. Um, I ended up getting my heart monitored. I hadn't had one that was this invasive, and it was like, <laughs> 12 very very sticky patches she ripped them off she, she said sorry but she didn't mean it uh, and that's what that was so <clears throat> until 5 at 85 grams will be a better than a VR headset yeah that's probably a good idea when I got home we played a lot of um, games with my kids and so that's what I've been doing and so I just wanted to say that I, I did miss them when, when I was away I love my kids love my wife um, and you know being back with my silly kids uh, on the left is Jade on the right is Denver uh, and we just like got to play a lot of kind of VR games when they were playing in VR and I was enjoying it from outside But I'll tell you not being able to VR really isn't good um, So to conclude I am gonna have to show you a, um, a Little video of me in the hot tub very short. Oh look Super short see wasn't faked. We were actually in actually. This is all CGI <laughs> We were actually in a hot tub for those photos you saw earlier and there's my um Lovely Tuscany shot again. Yeah, I don't know why these are repeating. Uh, I think we're... Come on. I told you we were done. I don't know what it is with... I gotta zoom in and out. And then maybe I get control back. Nope, still don't have control. Oh, that's the end. Oh, that's the end. Hey, finally we're finished. Way. All right, well, that was him. That was him. Finally, I'm back playing a bit. Hey, oh yeah, uh, when my Rift S had the problem after a recent firmware update, well, I waited for a replacement. I played basketball and broke two fingers. Thought that was bad. Oh, shit. Feckin' hell, two fingers. We had someone uh, break their fist in Rec Room. Uh, yeah, they broke, broke their hand while playing with us in Rec Room paintball. We were playing like a real aggressive match. All dudes, like, and it was um, 3v3, 4v4. I don't remember how many you can have. Uh, 5v5 maybe. No, 4v4. Um, it was awesome. It was so good. But yeah, no. Uh, are you, so are you back? Um, like to full flexibility in that? Um, anyway. So I feel a lot better. And the reason I did tonight's show was I feel a lot better. And I'm about to start again. I think I said it at the start, but I'll say it now because we obviously have a different audience closing up here. Um, quest and go I've got that stack working perfectly I'm going to show you how it looks because I'm really proud of it and I think it looks pretty feckin' badass this is what it looks like here I'm for some reason blurry Yaheim or whatever feckin' okay I'm blurry but this scene like this is my quest and ghost scene and I'm really looking forward to using this uh, I don't know why the feck I'm blurry that's weird anyway that wasn't blurry a second ago 
So anyway, uh, everybody, thank you for uh, hanging with me. Look, again, the purpose of this, I know it's long and drawn out and all that, and I'll do some tagging so it's a little bit easier for people who um, just want to hop through and see highlights or whatever. But the point is, like, if, if, if you want, I know you can't come along with me on these trips, and a lot of people can't afford it, and a lot of people just weren't there in the early days, and, and they do stuff better than me, and, like, maybe they're not in with Oculus or whatever yet, and they don't get... The, you know they're not able to afford the the same kind of trips because they did you know facebook did pay for um flights and put me up for one night in a hotel room SciTech put me up for uh not part of any business thing just because they think i'm a cool guy to hang out with um and so they they paid for what our airbnbs for the time so thank you john for that i appreciate it a lot um and then this NDA company flew me out, put me up in a hotel, and but if you think any of that influences my opinion, then you're silly. And um, I, 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 you know, it was hard enough going. It, I almost didn't go for a few reasons. I didn't go because of the neck. I didn't want to go because of the neck. Uh, I didn't want to go because of the earthquakes, the fires from previous years. California is quite a danger zone, and I'm quite a risk averse individual. Um, but because the F reality guys were going, I was like, you know what? Okay, it's time minified. It's likely nothing's going to happen while I'm out there. And actually, when I came back, it was like earthquakes kicking off and fires kicking off again. And it's like, okay, thank you. You waited for me to be gone because um, that was too close call in uh, previous years. I really didn't like that. Like, we got we got trapped between... We didn't get trapped, but we, like, there were two fires like on ridges right near our location. We were at a theme park. And we're like, let's fucking get out of here before we get toasted alive. I mean, you got to be smart about these things. Like, it's great to go and be, like, all optimistic. But remember, optimism bias is there because... Humans have to keep jumping to different things, and unfortunately, we're built to die for the greater good of our ongoing survival, <clears throat> which means some of you are going to die, right? Uh, don't necessarily want that to be you. At least not young. <laughs> like, live a little first. That's the thing that's probably the saddest thing, is like when you... I used to work as a hospital porter, and you see sick kids, and you know that they're on a short, on their, a short wick on their candle. It's like, feckin' hell, man. Like, that's not fair, but nature, eh? Anyway, look, everybody, thank you very much. Um, I, I appreciate you guys, firstly, uh, put up with these super long streams. Uh, I know some of you like that. I know some people like the more punchier stuff or whatever, but uh, there's fact tons of people who do the punchy stuff. Uh, I'm going to keep doing live shows. It's what, I'm, what I know. It's uh, what I feel I'm good at. And uh, look, I really enjoy being able to create and be part of this community and share the stuff I want to share and all that. And my focus in the next couple of weeks, I've got to catch up with indies. Indie developers have sent me all these titles. I've committed to playing those, and I will play those. I am really excited about them. There's a few big titles I'm going to do, but things like Asgard's Wrath, like, I'm really putting that off because I want it to cool down. This is the thing when big titles land. Everyone get through it. Like, play it if you want. I mentioned before I'm going to do a key quiz. I have a key for Asgard's Wrath. I'm going to put it out on Reddit. Uh, I'll link it in Twitter and stuff in my uh, Discord as well, if you want to join that and keep an eye on it. As I said, I'm not doing this as a promotional thing. Um, I just like creating it as a game, because I'm a real gamify person, game design person. Karen and I are currently working on our second game. Uh, first game was called Intermission, a chat game you can only play in, in Twitch, that you can half play in Discord, in our Discord channel. I'm playing that at the moment. Thank you, Sarah, Buck, and Steve, and other people who are playing with me at the moment. Uh, but we're working on our second game, and I'm so excited for that. I've got pages and pages of like stuff. I can't talk about it. Um, I'm hoping it'll only be a couple of months before we can release something publicly. Uh, but usually, because it's a text-based game, it doesn't take that long to get a alpha out. <coughs> um, and that that's going to be a Discord game. So uh, look out for that. Um, I'm looking forward to play loads of other things, and I'm really really happy. Yeah. I always have to watch out in paintball with grenades because sometimes I'll bounce them off the ground, hit my table one day because I forgot it was there. Ow! Dark Chancel, that's, uh, that's Dark Angel. Dark? Dark? I'm... you got to teach me how to pronounce your name so I do it right. Keep... I'm like, Dar, Angel, <laughs> Changel, Changel, that's the angel of change, Changel. Um, well, thanks for chilling for a couple of minutes here, dude, at the end. And uh, I think that's me out. I'm I don't think there's anything else I want to say. Um, I will give comments 
Uh, and then kind of a review on this guy, the Olympus 2 E10K headphone amp at some point. I am running through that at the moment. Only thing I've noticed is I have to be careful. Before I had like, I could hear what you were hearing, and now you're going by a line out, so I can't hear the same volume level. So if some of that stuff during tonight's uh, show was a bit louder than my voice and those weren't balanced very well, that's the reason. Because um, now I'm not listening exactly to what you're listening to, so I need to um, sort that out. Anyway, it's 1.15 here. Um, thanks for joining. I'm going to leave you on the way out with, as usual, a little bit of uh, a little bit of Monster Cat, I think is the way to do it. And um, thank you for hanging with me this show. I'll see you Tuesday for a proper Zim stream. Uh, might be a short one, but we're going to go anyway. So there you go. See, Robin, perfect for you. Now it's 7 p.m. You got a whole evening ahead of you to digest all kinds of things. Have a good night. Stay good. Oh yeah, chat's broken. <laughs> this scene's gonna feck up. Let's go. And sorry, outro chat is not working. I'll fix that before the next show, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, all. Good night. <laughs>